Oh, that's interesting. So it's showing up on on my stream, but it's not showing up on OBS. So I hope that doesn't screw something up, but I can see it there. So yeah, I've never played this before. This is like a voxel-based sort of game. And of all these block-based, voxel-based type of things, you would think I would have played Minecraft or something. Like I just played Roblox for the first time. This is sort of my format where I play a different thing that I've never played before every week. So yeah, this will be one of those kind of games that benefits from a tendency that I always praise, which is like, if you scale down the graphics of something, it allows indie developers, like maybe it's a small indie studio who made this. I don't even know off offhand who made it, but it allows them to do a lot of things with depth. Like it could be more complex than a AAA game and mechanics or itemization and character customization and combat and stuff without needing the mechanics to be top here or without needing the graphics to be top here. That's sometimes the trade-off you get, like the Binding of Isaac is so unbelievable. I don't think a AAA company could have made that. But because they scale it down, because it's a small indie, you know, developer at that point, Edmund McMillan, they were able to do more with less. There, there's sort of a minimalistic quality to that. Or like even Terraria or something like that. Minecraft itself is the classic example. So it will be first played through Permanent as well. And it's sort of like the whole theme of it is what I've been doing with a lot of MMOs lately. But then again, that's kind of my core format anyway, which is first played through Permanent. So if I die, I don't know if there's classes or how exactly it works, but... We'll try it like if we die that obviously and uh, we have to either restart as a different class or we have to just stop altogether. What would you like to be called? Let's do uh, I don't know if this is like the name of your character or the name of your username or what. There was maybe down that would be lovely, but it, it didn't seem like it was actually not working there. I always hate this when you have to like not not here even but the launcher just before you have to like Oh, here we go. There are classes, so that'll give us the bases. Not that we were going to fail in anything anyway. Tomb Razor, like a necromancer, which is always a cheese thing whenever you have anything with pets. Boomer Ranger, like a range class. Gunslinger, also like a range class. Candy Barbarian and Knight. Uh, some of these classes do seem pretty interesting. I, I assume Candy Barbarian will be somewhere between like a Paladin and some, some kind of special abilities class. Gunslinger would actually be more like a mage, probably, than any... Eh, it's hard to say. Let's just do Knight. Maybe something basic just to appreciate the game itself. Trovian, the shadows are consuming this world. We can help you escape. We are under attack. Defeat the shadows and follow Quabesli's instructions. Let's see how it controls. Camera movement's fine. You do mouse 1 or mouse 2 to attack your foes. The mouse 2 is like your special power attack. Pretty cool. There's just so many possibilities for a game like this, so I hope it isn't like overly simplistic. Even the fact that it has character classes is itself pretty cool. I keep trying to do like middle mouse to target because that was always what I had in Dark Souls. Someone please help. Let's see how the combat works because it is going to be pretty punishing when it comes to, you know, so I'll die to some unexpected thing. But usually these start so easy that it doesn't matter. Galaxy Garden, uncommon phase. 51 max health, one movement speed. All the rage with the kids ever since the animated series and toy line came out. This is not in your collection. Man is playing Maple Story. Who the fuck is that? Open your bags with B. 51. Wait, I didn't even like choose like where to go or anything. All the rage with the kids ever since the animated series came out. Uh, B or... Uh, wait. Oh, B just to open the bag. Locate the bridge so this is like a friendly thing. You do have a double jump right away. Good mobility. Just pick up everything, I guess, for now. Or... <clears throat> wait. What is this? Instead of briefly, uncommon face. This is not in your collection. Oh, for some reason I couldn't pick it up from when I was next to it there. I don't know how long this has been out for either. Like, I heard about it maybe in some capacity, but... Yeah, it's not like it's going offline or anything. That That's often the indication of... Oh, I haven't tried using my ability either. I'm just kind of auto-attack Andy over here. Except, see, even this is more interactive than a lot of MMOs because it's not auto-attack. Whether that's a good thing or not depends. Sometimes you have, like, hundreds of abilities for depth. Now, there must be a button where you are able to look over, like, my stuff on the bottom like where it gives you a cursor that you can wheel over it right because since you're aiming with this you know you don't have like free control over the camera 
but there must be a button that latches the cursor out where you can look at stuff in your stuff. Like, for example, even I open my bag, it lets me do that. I guess these are pretty much the same things I'm doing anyway. H must be like your Hearthstone there. You can dodge attacks, try out with shift. How about with just with movement in general? You have a roll, really good mobility. I don't really understand what... Oh, I mean, I guess one is locked and stuff. So 260, it seems like my health comes back automatically too. So you can totally cheese that. This is four around. Yeah, I've always been such a fan of that whole idea. Or we got to test like how much fall damage does. Like some small studio will make this incredibly deep complex game because the graphics admittedly might not be that good. Like Don't Starve is even a good example. Confront the threat at the end of the path. That wouldn't be possible otherwise, at least not by them. Me, take your soul. You two grab this one. Oh, so we're not actually going to fight that guy yet. Or maybe I could have if I was fast enough. The fact that your health comes back so much makes it feel a little bit exploitable, but that's probably not going to be as good later. But no, it's like the those with the will to do something creative and above and beyond don't have the means to do it, to make like in the form of a AAA title. And those with the means to do it don't have the will to do it because they're too cynical and, you know, whatever, corporate mindset driven. So you have to find the middle ground and sacrifice something, I guess, to see it is the point. Summon your cornerstone, find an empty cornerstone plot, look at the sign and press E. Uh, you met Todstrom, that's one of the baddest shadows around. It's gonna be like, I can build a house or something? Empty pot? Yeah, I was surprised how little building there actually was in Roblox, or at least you have to go specifically to a certain mode. Cornerstone will remain unless you choose to move it elsewhere, so maybe this will be where I can hard to. I don't know whether I should have used my username like that. I don't want my name in the game to be that, like if people are going to see me, but then again, I'm not going to do anything multiplayer either, which to some people might seem strange, but at least my first time playing something, I kind of just want to mess around with it and, you know, play it like a single player experience, like let's say until I get to max level, which I don't even know what the max level is. But then once you do that, then you can do that, do the multiplayer stuff or... Because I do feel like it kind of taints the experience, especially when you're doing a challenge. I, I love this kind of stuff. Let, let's see how far we can get. I guess that's maybe as far as we can go. Um, yeah, if you're doing like first playthrough permadeath, you don't want to be killed by a player, but you also don't want them to help you or potentially save you from dying. Mouse one to place three blocks. Oh, here we go. Now we're going to be really... In now, it makes it seem like you can only put them there, but not really. Uh, hold, press and hold M2 in build mode to destroy three blocks at your corner zone. Oh, I didn't think we'd be using, like, a laser to do it. How do you go into the build mode again? I forgot already. Uh, look for nodes. Mine five ore. I mean, I kind of don't want to do as much of this today, but this is kind of still fine. They're just introducing it. Ore is used to make lots of useful things. Look for purple blocks. And yeah, this will have a better building system than Minecraft, or at least it'll be super, uh... Look for nodes of purple shards on ore. Oh, you want five? But I'm gonna get killed. Yeah, how did I switch to this? I forgot. What if this thing attacks me? How do I... Or maybe it won't attack me, but they, they can't separate the two. That's the whole excitement of it, in fact. You'll be going looking for some resource, but... Why don't we get some extra then? Fuck it. You'll be looking for something, and then you'll have to put your life at risk to get it. And you'll be competing against other players for resources, too, which is... You know, a good staple of MMOs, but it can be kind of bullshit sometimes, too. <clears> Our <throat> rank 24. I have more options here, 1 through 8, than I do normally. Like, uh, uh, on my other bar, only had like 5 or something, like more Diablo style. That's the one insulting thing about Diablo. Like, they have all this potential from like, wow, where you have like 6 task bars, each with 12 options and all these kind of crazy abilities all over your screen. But then Diablo shrunk it down. Like if you look at Diablo 4, there's only like 5 or 6 or something in the middle of it. Z to mount. And I feel like this is the kind of thing you shouldn't really start with. I didn't earn this. You should get this at level 40 for a thousand gold or whatever resource. Reach the portal at the top of the spire. Or maybe it's teasing you like you won't get to keep it. <clears throat> at the top of the spire. Uh, wait, what? That's where I can't, I assume it would be just through here, but yeah, I don't know how you actually switch in and out of that. 
I guess we'll just wait. I'll figure it out. But yeah, I'm surprised these bats didn't attack me. Or Ima imagine if I die like that. I'm. You gotta fight with your mining laser like you would in uh, in No uh, No Man's Sky. Don't forget, you can enter and exit build mode by pressing tab. Actually, that's exactly what I wanted. So that means when you're in build mode, you probably can't be attacked by stuff, which it shouldn't really do that. You should just be able to, you know, reflexively deal with it and move on. Reach the portal. Okay. This is probably one of the more actual boring classes to play too, but I almost picked those deliberately just because I, I wanted to be less about the class and more to do with just the world and stuff this time. And then you can obviously try the other ones, not because I'll fail and die on this one, be because you're doing a great job. What's annoying too is like the chat can sort of spoil stuff too. They'll, they'll give advice to other people, so I'm going to try not to read it. E to use the portal. Pursue Tostrom to the final island. Okay. They use a lot of fan art for the loading screens. I don't know what this really has to do with, with Trove, though. This art style is from some Japanese anime or manga. I don't, I don't like the linearity of how it shows you arrows every five seconds. Like, it can show you the general gist stuff. I love this, too, that you can just destroy everything. Although, I guess not. You can't destroy these. Or maybe you can. Like, if we switch... Wait, I can't do it now. Find cubes near the Mag Rider rails at the entrance to the abandoned moon mine. X to use your Mag Rider to approach the rails. I can't really seem to control this, though, really. That's weird. Why couldn't we go into crafting mode there if I wanted to break down my whole environment? But, like, imagine how fun that is in PvP. I played, like, Guncraft, which is, like, a pretty unpopular game that was never too successful but it like tried to combine where you could build in the middle of combat like the original fortnite almost ace of spades kind of style i, I can't even see what's happening wasd but i can't seem to control that whatever like you know you could kill somebody by destroying the ground underneath them or you could build like a barrier in, in front what's happening you to use your class to heal it actually stopped me from moving though I'm sure there are other games like this, too, but I've never really played one that, you know, combines the whole, uh... But I haven't played too many voxel-based games, period, I don't think. That might be the one I played the most, was uh, Guncraft. It was one of those instances where people are, like, accusing me of cheating. Report, because everybody just sucked, picking on little kids. Yes, we caught her, good. You sold to collect. Excellent work, I must return to the Shadow Tower to proceed. Bring that new trophy and soul to me, it will serve our purpose. Boss wants your soul, so no struggle. This will, that will only hurt more. Rejuvenation station. Refill your flask. You're trying to make like Dark Souls or something now. Uh, we got to use the uh, dodge ability. This combat is actually very different than I thought it would be. Like, there's way more movement and, and stuff. Be cool to see like end game stuff too, like a raid boss or whatever. It's kind of hard to get away from them though because his hitbox is so big. Too powerful. Wait, what? I, I don't want your help, dude. Fuck, even when players aren't cocking you, the NPCs will. I didn't need your help at all. That guy's a joke. What a fucking clown, this guy. This is not finished. He's looking at him, too. I don't even get the credit. Well done. I'm sure you'll be seeing him again. For now, I must go. And yeah, never come back, you clown. You ruined the whole experience. Already getting carried. Good job. Why is it still telling me to right click? Or Q? Press H for several seconds to return to the world hub. The one and two we don't have unlocked yet. And unfortunately, there's a disappointing lack of room on the taskbar for various abilities. Now, this I won't want to do either. Come find me next to the thing. Let's look through some of the settings here. Audio, master volume, ambience volume, play audio in the background. Sure. Control. What doesn't actually work in the background is... Uh, is the video if i tab out it goes to a black screen and not only does it go to a black screen but it also sort of doesn't show on obs at all so i'm kind of worried that it'll fuck up in the vod but e to craft like i kind of just want to explore a leveling area so i don't know how this works at all and yeah this this had like 600 plus players on uh steam charts which, which is not bad for something that I wasn't too sure. That's what I have to be careful when I do these flex format days. Like, I'll play a game that's about to be delisted, like Crime Site, but then I'll have zero people playing, and it's an online-only game, so you won't be able to play it. So even in my attempt to, 
Celestial Paragon Provisioner. Even in my attempt to play a game just to have a chance to try it before it goes offline, you won't be able to because you'll be cucked in the ultimate way that like, I go through the trouble to buy it even when the top Steam review says, oh well, don't buy it because you won't be able to play it because it's about to go offline. But that's exactly why I do want to buy it, but then it just doesn't work, you know? Like at least this, even if it was a dead server, which it doesn't seem to be at all, or, or all the servers being dead, it doesn't mean that... So you can't just destroy walls like that, though. There's, there will be some structures you can't fuck with. I kind of just want to go out in the overworld and do stuff, but... Still level one. One, two, shift is the dash thing there. It makes it seem like you could maybe replace that with something else. So shift will, instead of the dash, it'll do... Yeah, but I love the art style. Hub square, novice difficulty. How about you just let me leave that whole area, though? Or it'll take me on a quest. Irma Bomber Royal Royale Token. Prove your worth and earn a bomber, bomber Royale Token and bow. No, that sounds like a multiplayer type of thing. Portal. Or it should even tell you that. Fast, fronting, and fun bombing against each other other players. Yeah, that's not fair because then I I don't want to end other people's permadeath runs that they're totally doing. This is the kind of thing that nobody would ever do it with either. Although most people don't do it on first playthroughs of anything anyway. But especially in an MMO. Explore this around a little bit, but I kind of just want to get to an open area and explore around. Like even here, what what is this place? Is he gonna be like way out of my level and something will just one shot me? Let's see how much of this we can destroy. I do like that out in the open that you can just destroy whatever you want. Now it doesn't seem like I'm getting it or like where is it going? Because my one is the same. It's still at six. So what is this doing for me? Uh, let's see. Oh, it'll show in the bag here. I have 917, Primal Green, Primal Red. What is this, Burning Crusade all over again? All the all the Primals you gotta farm in the Grand. Let's switch back to here. I guess I don't even know that that was an enemy for sure, but they're not very hostile. Now, this is almost what I'd like to do. Just like, don't even worry about quests, don't even worry about players, just explore. Play like it's an open world game. <clears throat> See how far we can go, but then the only problem with that in MMOs is, of course, the fact that either stuff expects you to be in group sometimes, or... Gotta love developers to dedicate to a game, even if it's a semi-small community. He's almost saying that, like, for my benefit. Indeed. Small indie studio. Now we have to... Oh, it's the fact that either they expect you to group up, or they sort of... Sometimes it is hard to get away just with the sheer movement. Level 2... Or they'll, they'll put something out of your level range. Like, how can I see what level this guy is, right? He doesn't have one. You just have to guess to me. So there'll be a level 100 that one-shots me, and I won't even know that it is. They should probably put some indication of that. Because um, you can always wander off maybe too far. Cornerstone to claim. Does that mean now that this is my new one? I guess I'm fine with that, but... Under construction. The, the whole building element I don't think I'll do too much with, even though when I don't get the building element in a game like this, I don't... I kind of complain about it. Haven't had a house in an MMO since maybe Tibia or something. Where that was such a cool system, actually. You you could, like, put your stuff on the floor so you have this, like, diamond armor. And so everybody who walks by gets to see it from overhead. Just with the perspective of the game. Tibia had some amazing mechanics. And most punishing of all was, like, if you die, you lose levels. And you can get killed by players. It was insane. And there was no max level. Like, fuck, dude. And this is we're talking about a game that came out in like 97. I guess kind of underrated. Ultima Online, I guess, got a lot more credit or whatever other <clears throat> other ones at the time. Yeah, I basically went from that in my whole MMO experience. I went from Tibia to WoW, and that was pretty much it. I mean, those are the main two that I played. I played probably a little bit of RuneScape. I probably tried a lot of them briefly, but none of them really stuck. And I love the whole meme of how many... Now, I assume these might all be taken if it was like a super overcrowded server or something. Or maybe this area isn't shared and you can just keep doing that. It's not like I need it because like, oh, you'll come back there if you die, but I'm not going to die. Or even in the case of... What do you call it? I, I guess I could hearth back there. I wonder if it'll let you do this during combat. 
Game summoning experience. Everything's just very clean and smooth, though. I, I do like it. I just want to see what kind of other cool areas we can get to, see how far we can go. Yeah, this should just be like a straight, just keep going kind of thing. Like, I don't even care about the building. I don't even care about anything. Quests, level three, Springfield's not... I guess that's what'll tell you, just the novice difficulty aspect. That is such a fun idea that most people don't really try to do. Try to play an MMO like it's an open world game and just ignore all the stuff that would... Not that you really have to do that, but... If you ignore a lot of the stuff that requires other players or involves them, and that's what can make it so immersive is the fact that if you die, it, it's all over. So now they're recycling this enemy type a little bit too much. What is this anthem with the big shield guys or whatever? Novice difficulty. Let's see how big these areas are. See, these can go on forever because they can just clone the texture and it's not like these graphics are so demanding. So that's a trade-off that you're more than willing to make. Or yeah, what, what about all the hype about the VR MMO that's going to change the whole landscape of all, all gaming? Knock him off, fall damage, but he can fly. Oh, we haven't really seen them fly that actively yet. So it actually has a Souls-like combat system where you get to roll, you get to move away instead of like auto. So you could do a hitless run of this. Fuck the whole, especially if you played as one of the range classes. You could do an actual hitless run because it's not like you're taking guaranteed target damage. That's just relying on automatic mitigation to deal with. I definitely wasn't expecting the combat to be like that. The fact that your health comes back so quick makes it a little bit too easy in the early game, but that probably won't be a factor later as much. And certainly knights aren't the class I would normally pick, but I play too many mages lately, so I have to mix it up somehow. In fact, some of the classes were pretty weird, like the necromancer or whatever, or the, the candy knight. I guess there's only five, or maybe you can only see five at the beginning. I guess you could just keep updating your your house location by doing this. It seems kind of weird, almost like other players are meant to have had these too. So you, you can only choose one if it's not taken, but... Okay, stop using the same enemy type and, and show me like a different area. How big is this place? Or maybe it just goes on forever. You might not even notice the difference in a way. Or you can just like literally... This is what I find so fascinating, because you could, like, create a trap for somebody if it was, like, a PvP area or something. Make it seem like, oh, it's just, what a weird rock formation, or what a weird thing, and then they fall into a pit and die or something. I don't know how much of that kind of stuff you can really do, but... It opens up a lot of possibilities. Let's just see how far we can go. I mean, obviously you should do quests and stuff, but... What is this? Neo fights wing. Complete an objective and earn this reward. Cornerstone Foundation, you can- The biggest thing that triggers me, I think, in MMOs is when the movement is, like, stiff and annoying. Which, of course, RuneScape, that's the only thing I didn't like about RuneScape. It's like, you- you click to walk, but then he takes, like, five seconds to start moving, and they never updated it because it was something in the engine. Like, this is just how it has to be, it's just smooth and- and responsive, which, in this day and age, isn't much to ask for, but... Somehow, the whole click to move- even Tibia was more responsive than RuneScape, somehow. And part of that was latency stuff too, like, oh, they make it that way on purpose so that, you know, that's why you have GCD or whatever in WoW. Oh, what, what was that? I did like a dive with the jump. <clears throat> it wasn't that. I jumped up here and I did like a spatial dive, I don't know, by just hitting space. <laughs> One enemy type area though, holy shit, that, that's kind of a bad sign actually. It means they might keep recycling stuff or I could be going in an endless loop. Come on, you can have a couple wolves or something else. Let's see what, if we get to like a level, a medium difficulty area. Springfields. It could just be that it's super big, like... Let me see. Or it could be somehow like randomly generating stuff. How do you actually zoom out in this? You player hub cornerstone. I'm mean, actually getting to the edge of the map, according to that. <clears throat> like you could just stop here and just build like a little like how would I even do that yeah you could just build a structure rest for the night RP a little bit create like a trap or like a cool little uh, I don't know you can do so many things with it I don't know if you can swim or not we're gonna die to the John Marston effect that is one of the most troll ways to die too 
Like, oh, I'm doing a first playthrough of Hermit of the Red Dead Redemption. And I, let's see what's over in the water here. And then you just immediately die as soon as you go in it. Or like even, G yeah, what is that? I don't know how I keep doing that. Do you jump, jump, and then you hold? That was what we saw like earlier where there was sort of, when I was going through like one of those portals. Cornerstone. So where exactly would it be though? Oh, it's behind me. I'm stupid. That'd be cool if we could get like a higher vantage point. They make it all the way to the water. Okay, let's try to do like a no quest run too, aside from the tutorial thing. I don't want to risk going in the water after saying that. Yeah, GTA 3. I didn't die because the guy knocked me. We were in like a car chase and the guy knocks me in the water. So I could have got out of my car and swam to freedom. But no, you can't swim. It wasn't because somebody rammed their car a hundred miles into me, an hour into me and knocked me off and caused my car to flip over. It's the fact that I'm in the goddamn water. That's the real threat. Because it didn't blow up or anything, or at least not right away. The most dedicated criminal in uh, Liberty City, which it's not even Liber Liberty City, I don't think. So let's see how we can find maybe another area. I guess it, it does give the sense, at least for this part, that it's sort of just looping, even though it, it did come to an end. Like, pretend we didn't want to warp back to the hub. How, how long would this go on for? I guess based on this, it's all still the, the grasslands. Which even that is fun, like we're just kind of grinding up. <clears throat> it doesn't really feel like I would be at any risk of dying, but then famous last words, you never know. They'll introduce some crazy one-shot mechanic or something you're just not familiar with. Which is why I like the whole first playthrough thing in the first place, right? Like, once you know everything about a game, you might not think it's that hard to do, although people still struggle, you know, with certain permadeaths. But it's like there'll be some one-shot mechanic, like an Earthbound, that's why I don't do it for super old games, where they just turn you to stone and that's it. So that would be the end of your run. And you had no way of knowing they were going to do that. You had no way of stopping them from doing it. Or even reacting to it afterwards. Like, what you could do, assuming that other players are going to come through here too, you could just destroy, like, the whole thing, right? You can destroy everything. So either it just keeps respawning very quickly or it le that sense of permanence would be cool, right? Like somebody could stay here for 10 hours and destroy the whole forest and then it won't come back for a super long time. Or if somebody really takes the time to do that, or if I build like a really tall structure here, it'll just stay there until somebody destroys it, let's say. Or you could be like an in, in an instant zone because there's nobody here. At least the structure is starting to look a little bit different. Feels like these cornerstone things are too frequent though and too generous. Every five steps you get like a new checkpoint or whatever it is. I assume you spawn there if you die, but I guess we'll never find out. Okay, this at least looks different. I'm not really understanding what the map is telling me here. Just like each of these is like its own little mini section. Should maybe mess around with the settings a little bit. So nothing is like really aggressive so far. English, max volume, controls, gamepad support, full screen. Yeah, I, I clearly can't handle this on. Lower means better performance. What is it even on though? How would I even know? Oh, it was on medium. You wish to save your changes to this page. <laughs> Imagine you can't handle this. Although OBS was having some issues, like you can't game capture it. I wonder how much people actually stream this. I, I didn't look at it as a category. It seems like it might lack depth. Not that you can... <laughs> I'm in any position to say it now, but it might lack depth in the end game and stuff, but... I don't even know what the max level is. Oh, I went to build mode. It does seem like stuff maybe won't attack you when you're in build mode. Maybe I should do some quests just because it'll take me to some other area. Because otherwise I would just wander around like this the whole time. So M2 is just the power attack. What does one even do? I don't think it even told me that or anything that I got it. But I'm probably just not paying attention. That is like a charge ability. You hold it down. So if, the longer you hold it, maybe the further you go. That is pretty sick. And I was trying to call Knight a boring class. Or maybe it is fixed. One enemy type Andy, though. Come on. You can, you can do better than that. Power rank 86. Weapon, face. All stuff just still from the tutorial. Restores 40% health on use. 
But see, it should have a cooldown, right? It, it doesn't say it. So you could just spam it. Going to be the old Skyrim effect that's really problematic where, especially in an MMO, where you're in the middle of combat and you can just pause it at least there and stuff your face with like a million potatoes just to keep yourself alive. Or even when you're not paused, just put it to a hotkey and spam it. You'll never die if you just have enough of them. Typically, MMOs will have like a, you know, two-minute cooldown on the potion or something to make it a little more balanced. These damage values are already kind of jacked out, though. Doing a thousand damage at level four. They're not really even doing much to me, but I guess these are pretty under level now. Although you can't really tell just by looking at them. Like it says novice difficulty, but what does that really mean? Like I'm only level four, so it should still be adequate. Almost one shiny. Let's see if this actually does damage. Oh, it does quite a bit, too. What you have to not do if, if combat gets more intense is don't rely on moving around like this. Because I was trying to do that even against the little mini boss guy earlier. Where that stupid NPC is, is even bailing you out and helping you. But it's not that I would have died there. But just in general. Don't rely on expecting that to get you away. Always do the little roll. Just play it actually soul style. Like only going for one hit and then roll and then wait for them to do something and then come back and do it. <clears throat> That was actually the criticism of, of Dark Souls in the beginning, or even Demon Souls, was like, oh, the combat is too slow-paced or something with how you, you know, go back and forth. But they obviously made it work. I can't remember what what uh, outlet did that. They, they even said, like, oh, IGN, 0 out of 10, combat too slow-paced. Let's see what we got. Yeah, okay, so assuming I've exhausted this area, I guess I thought it would lead into another area. But there's just water everywhere. And you can't really zoom out on this map. Kind of obsessed with the flying thing there. I didn't know you could just do that. Especially if that was like a base class ability. <laughs> what the hell does that have to do with being a knight? <sighs> so what were the other classes? There was Necromancer. There was a Gunslinger. There was like a Boomerang guy. Both of those seem ranged. The Tomb guy's obviously going to summon stuff. And then finally there's the... Uh, there's the Candy Knight, which is probably going to be, you know, I, I think of it maybe as a Paladin or something, just with special abilities on top of this. I always said that, like, that knights are boring because it's like, oh, that's something you could do in real life. Not literally, but like, you know, knights, warriors and knights really existed in, in the real world where, you know, Roman gladiators and this and that. Whereas a mage is just completely embracing the fan. It's like low fantasy versus high fantasy. Even if the knight's doing these crazy abilities that you couldn't do in real life or that you wouldn't really do in your current state of affairs, it's just, you know, the mage is completely going to be really badass and casting fireballs and stuff that nobody has ever done. Yeah, there's way too many of these plots. I don't see what the point of it really is. I wonder what the game's peak sort of numbers were. It is free, but then why did it say two ninety nine on Steam? I guess it didn't. It must be for some D DLC or some bonus thing or something. It'd be kind of fun to parkour up the tree. Like, let's see, we make a hole to be able to jump into, and then we keep going. We make like a whole obstacle course out of it. Yeah, see, nothing would be able to stop me from doing this. You have to leave a spot to still jump onto in the middle of the way. Of course, all it's going to lead to is me probably falling off and dying from fall damage. Fuck. I don't even know if there is... Well, I mean, we have the wing, so that's kind of a moot point if you just use it properly. Like overheating an anthem, I would be the kind of the clown to do it. Where you can fly so much, you have so much mobility, and yet, somehow, you'll still end up getting yourself killed. This is like a little nice hardcore jumping puzzle. This is cool. Go here... It's not like there's going to be anything up there. Remember, you have the wings in case something goes wrong or there'll be some, like, level 50 enemy here that you're not meant to fight. We can go even higher than this. <laughs> this is kind of showing off the, the mechanical nature of this. Oh, shit. I don't know if there was a hole there or not. A mechanical nature of this game. What other MMO can you do this kind of thing in? More to the point, why would you even here? Just trying to see the very top of the world. 
use this. And of course, this is giving me a whole bunch of shit in my inventory, which I don't really care about right now. To try to build up my base maybe a little bit better. Makes it seem like this is going to go on forever, but the tree's got to have a top. I guess you can't see it that well because of how high it goes. There we go. The light at the end of the tunnel. That's pretty badass. Now, let's see if we can fly back down, although I'm, I'm a little bit worried about that. What if I do die? Or you could make like a bridge. Oh, that, that's no problem at all. They don't seem to really care about trying to punish you for stuff like that. Okay, let's go this way back to the town. Of course, I could just teleport back too. What does R do? Oh, shit. Uh, control B. Did you wait to Q from the Bomber Royale? No. Or maybe it relies on multiplayer more than what I'm expecting. Th that was maybe something I have to craft, which now I don't even know how to do that. What is that? I keep doing stuff that I don't mean to do. Oh, I did Q. So that was like a grenade, although I don't know how you make them. Did it tell me how to make? Let's see. How do you actually see the crafting recipes? Or you just have to do a blind like you would in... Uh... In Minecraft, that's actually what I want to do with Minecraft one day, since I've never played it really, is that you try to figure out all the recipes yourself. Do like a true blind playthrough, permadeath, whatever kind of experience. But even the most basic things that everybody knows by heart now and takes for granted will be like kind of a big revelation. And some of them are super convoluted and confusing, I feel like. Just from what little I know about it. Or you have to use like real world logic, like put the... I don't know, like you're making a railroad track. You have to be like a real world engineer to be able to figure it out. Okay, so this area we've pretty much seen all there is to see, which is mostly just the same enemy type over and over. Level four, we got a cool new ability. It'd be cool if that even broke through the land too. This is exactly kind of universe where every ability could be like destructible cover. So you shoot like a fireball, not only will it leave like a residual thing on the ground, maybe the damage and stuff, but it'll also destroy all the ground. Like this could go just like right through the blocks. I can't seem to see players anywhere besides here. I guess I should try to just <clears throat> have the game push me in some direction. Probe mastery rank. That kind of closes every time you move. Cubits. Neophytes. Wings. Cornerstone foundation. Blah, blah, blah. It didn't really tell me I don't think to do anything right away. But your instinct would probably be to try to do quests. Oh, here's the guy. Enter a medieval highlands world. Good to see you again. I made some changes to how you view the world. I'll talk to you here top right going forward as you saw todd strom is working for someone someone trying to collect souls but why explore the medieval highlands for clues the station next to me and the sun goddess statue is the atlas it shows the whole known universe use the atlas and press Control a to visit a highlands world Control a oh yeah here's exactly what we wanted Give me some different locations. This does make it feel kind of just like, oh, all we did was just clone the textures and change the color, but there's got to be more enemy variety and stuff, I'm sure. This is where we just were. This is, I'm not sure, maybe that's where we started. Geode Sanctuary. Bring the hope to the peaceful Geodians who are under attack by the Merciless Shadows. Wait, what did he even say? Like a Highlands world? First Veil. Oh, here we go. Medieval. Isn't that what we just did, though? Press E to enter this adventure world. Or I guess not. It's just grassy. Where once stood great kingdoms, but now only the bugs and fungi. Yeah, literally only bugs, am I right? It's totally going to be the same as I think I just did, which is kind of my fault. Or yeah, you already have a mount, too, which is kind of, you know, sometimes less is more. You should make people wait and have to. Peaceful hill is novice difficulty. I guess it's a little bit different. E to teleport to a random player. Try to avoid players as much as possible. And I'm afraid of the water for the time being. Aquaphobia is our character's RP sort of uh, bad history condition. Let's come up with a story. Like our parents died on a ship. So like the Truman and the Truman Show. And so he's afraid to, to go near it. Uh, I just overcame my fear, I guess. Although I don't know. Also about breathing underwater. Uh-oh. 
That was a little bit of an overly ambitious thing. I don't even know what was hitting me. Complete a dungeon. You made the jump literally to the medieval highlands. You open your map, you should see dungeons all around you. Completing dungeons means finding treasure chest. Does it mean that I have to do it with other players though? Chest means loot. Loot means getting stronger. Stronger means one step closer to your thing. Other trophies are out there completing dungeons. If you see a giant red axe, that means that's a sign that Trovian has already cleared it and you should skip it. Let's see on the map exactly what that means. Like, I assume each of these would be a dungeon. It doesn't seem like we have any real aversion to the water. Too bad I wasted that grenade. I'm sure, or maybe we'll just pick up more. It's totally gonna be something that just one shots me. Slay the shark man raider. Uh, must be some place where you can go inside. Never mind the fact that I could just blow through it with my thing. If there isn't a hole, just make one yourself or just climb to the top. I imagine most of the stuff won't be on the outside though. Oh, these are little bouncy pads. Oh, here we go. This is cool. Little boss battle. Uh, e to teleport between locations. Couldn't really destroy those cannons. This can't be the guy. That was nothing. Play the Shark Man Raider. I can't really tell where... Th is it showing me that like on the map? Five times bomb. Oh, you might only get them from that. Supposed to be like a globe. Oh, here we go. Now we get to go inside. Which means that's why you couldn't destroy the outside of it, of course. Otherwise, you could just skip right to the end. Okay, this is more what I'm talking about. A lot of obstacles. Don't try to go too far too fast. You can't destroy these. Or maybe you could destroy it with like an explosive thing. Just pretend like everything's going to one-shot you. will turn it into a hitless run, which arguably so far it seems like you could do. Because the combat is very free form. Oh, shit. A little bit too much. I shouldn't have jumped down there so, so blindly. Although so far nothing's really doing a meaningful amount. But you shouldn't get... Overconfident. Was that it? Okay. Let's try to clear every dungeon. 100% completionist run. Iron infused axe fish. Uncommon melee. Power rank 7. 20. 30 maximum health. The sharp swimmer metabolizes water suspended iron into its scales. Not in your collection. Let's see. What is this thing anyway? Burnished. Broken. 22 physical damage. Uncommon melee. It's unscarred surface shows that it hasn't seen much use yet. Power rank 7, 7, 20, 22, 1 movement speed. I guess I don't really feel like I need the health as much. Uh, chipped sword. You can't like dual wield or anything. Although if you can't as a knight, then who really can? Hat, face, banner, ally. <clears throat> okay, go to the start of the dungeon, then we can jump out. So what would this thing have done anyway? Teleport between locations. Uh, maybe it just takes you down to the bottom, which you don't have to do because you have these sexy wings, which is totally going to get me killed at some point. You'll land like in the ground that's actually shallow water and get you killed. What did that actually happen in? I think that did happen to me in some game. I was trying to do some jump like that from a high place and it's like, oh, it's okay. I'll land in the water. And it looks like you do, but then there's like a really shallow spot of ground. So then I took, I died from fall damage. Let's explore around this area. We'll try to do like the whole campaign here. Just the, uh, all those different locations that showed me on the Atlas. Now, are these enemies or what? Pirate. Pirates. Pirate. Yeah, see all these different cool enemy types, even if they attack all the same way. Although he kind of knocks you back pretty well. I feel like I'm just too strong right now, though. Literally, my base spirit of auto regen is, is too much for them. Newt Mask, 46 health, 5% critical. Oh, I should read the, all the flavor text too. And yeah, I think here you just kind of phase out and stuff won't even try to attack you, which is kind of cheese. Somebody's hiding back there, you can see him. Uh, nano exhaled waste treatment masks were crucial in early benthic colonies. Plus 5% critical damage, minus health. Uh, if I was really trying to compare it. 51, 1% movement speed. Yeah, we'll go for a movement speed build. 
Not that we don't have great mobility with this charge anyway. That knockback is actually pretty good. Mechanic. I'm even talking shit like, oh, all the enemies are just going to attack in melee range like so many games. But then he punishes me with a pretty sick knockback. Let's see. We got to do the bag. Okay, I keep forgetting. You should be able to move while you're, you're looking at this stuff. 5% uh, critical damage. I guess I'll just keep what I have now. Like, let's compare the appearances. It's gonna be a lot of cool looking stuff, obviously. Okay, let's see. Let's let's go from dungeon to dungeon, I guess. Oh, and the X is gonna kind of this is kind of where it's nice if it's uh a dead server because it's like, oh, there's an X there, that means I did it, not that somebody else did it. So I'll get an X through all of them, and it'll just be like, you know, it almost is like you're playing a single player game. Even the world map is tracking your progress. Look how many there are, too. Holy shit. Where is the entrance to it? Sometimes it's a little bit confusing. You have to, like, go all the way to the top every time. That might be a good way to know. It's very smooth how, how easily we just kind of got into it. And, you know, even if this isn't the way you're really meant to play it. Okay, that, the knockbacks can be kind of nuts, dude. Oh, this is gonna get good later once once these fights actually last longer and stuff. This is like one of the range classes maybe that you'd be playing like a gunslinger. Jesus Christ, I can't avoid the knockback though. Dang up the sea wall. 20 physical damage, one energy regen. Originally belonging to a legendary pirate, it has adorned countless treasure troves. This is not in your collection. And of course, that's why it's called Trove. Now we finally know, because you build your house and you bring all your treasure back to it, I, I guess. Although your bag is so big for now, I'm not going to have to worry about it. What does this even mean? You do not have enough credits. Oh. Of course, they must have some crazy business model because... It's like a rare item, a blue... Mal Mouthy Moray. Rare melee. 39 physical... Of course, every single game in existence uses the same color scheme. Gray is trash. White is common, uh, green is uncommon, blue is rare, purple is epic, and orange is legendary. Every single game, and I don't know what game gets credit for that. Was it one of the early Diablos that did it first, or was it WoW itself? Is it what I always associate it with? 46 maximum health, 2% attack speed. Nothing like a spot of primordial fury to face the hardships of life. This is not in your collection. It gives no lip, but it takes big bites. Okay. Our first rare... Okay, I, I gotta get used to the... I keep doing I for inventory. Uh, okay, so that's just a pure upgrade. 2% attack speed, don't care, don't care about... Now, I don't know what energy regen even means, like... For your abilities or for a particular class, like like for this, I guess. Okay, yeah. It, it doesn't really give you a number value there, as far, as far as how much... Fuck, I keep doing that energy you have, but... Maybe it'll be less relevant for this class than most. 9% health regen, which I don't really feel like I need, but... Minus 5% critical... Critical damage. Actually, this seems better. I don't know why I'm not using that. 5% crit, don't really care. Have 6 bombs. So mostly that, it seems like it wants you to just pick up. And Q is going to be like your flask. It was trying to control your resources, maybe, in the key ways. Like, these are things you can't just get whenever you want, or maybe you can, but... You have to actually earn them out in the world. So you can't just go in a dungeon with like a million of them and just cheese through it. One movement speed. Minus ton of health. Minus regen. Uh, that's fine. I'm even saying that like I'm so... E it's so hard to kill me. So why would I care about regen and health? But whatever. For now, it's fine. Now, dungeon exits. But, but these are kind of the same purpose then. Yeah, so I want to keep track too. Visually, just of like which ones I'm doing. I'm kind of doing them in order. Now, this one seems like it would have to be either just bigger or maybe one that requires you to have other players to help you to do it, which I don't want to do. So that's the hard mode aspect of it. Try to solo a five-man dungeon. Great strategy. I almost wish your health didn't regen and you just kind of had to deal with it. But I'm sure stuff will be doing way more as we go on. Wait. Oh, it'll be like inside of this. Maybe I can't even do it. You can't really tell if you're suffering like a breathing thing either. Or maybe you just can't do it. Play the Sharkman Deeps here. 
that was some great dungeon crawling. You've, you're looking stronger already. Meet up with me back in the hub by pressing H. I want to show you around. I'm near where you left me. You just kind of keep saying to do whatever it is that you're doing, though. So how the heck do you even do this? Must be something later. It's like a Cthulhu eye staring at you. Or do you have to, like, maybe build where it's showing you this? Oh, you have to break it open. I don't want to necessarily fall in there, though. Is that really all you have to do? Uh, or you can always do it like this. So, you, oh, you know you're not going to take fall damage even as I almost just do. Now, this could be a big mistake. But you might be... It should probably warn you. What's going on here, dude? Lost Isles novice difficulty. I'm going to have to fight stuff actually underwater, maybe. Which, again, I don't know whether I'm going to drown or not, or whether that's a mechanic to worry about. That's weird that you just have to break inside there like that. Uh, I don't know. It's it's not really giving me a good any. Oh, you know what I should do? Rather than derping around here too much, is I should test it. But it'll, it'll like, one-shot me, or it's going to do something troll to end my run. Let's just not even worry about it. It'll be a good excuse to re-roll to another class. So whenever there's these things that's telling you that there's a dungeon, that's a good way to learn it. You have to go further up here. You have to do something to restrict your ability to just break in through your general movement. Uh... But up to where? Like, there is nothing here. Maybe I'm wrong. Huh. This is it, isn't it? Yeah. Or maybe it's the opposite. You have to go down to the bottom. It's not showing any indication that you're having trouble breathing. Dark man shaman. Of course, here you can just jump as much as you want. You don't have to worry about the flying. We'll do a plunging attack for extra damage, even though it probably... Oh. It doesn't actually treat it like that anyway. Yeah, you can vert abuse verticality now instead of horizontality, which means it's easier to avoid by going up and down because you don't have to worry about, you know, really the distance between you because of how slow your movement can be even normally. You have to rely on that little dash. So it seems like underwater combat is pretty, pretty much the same. Yeah, I'm just kind of doing too much. Got to get to a higher level area. Or I guess I over-leveled myself by... I mean, I guess we could RP that we have to catch our breath, but it really doesn't seem like they care about that too much. What is this thing? Lost Isles Lighthouse. Is that maybe the... No, that's another one. I don't really get where this one was. At first, I thought you couldn't go in there or you'd have to do it in a big group, but then you can just break through it anyway. There are clearly enemies here. Let's look around a bit. Actual hitless. What is that thing? Kind of sea urchin. Oh, yeah, I got to use this more too. Or maybe you can't use it under, underwater. I don't know what was even happening there. Give me the sexy mud crab music. There isn't much music, actually. That's one thing that seems like it's maybe missing. What does two even do? I, I guess you can't go over like a tooltip, so you just have to see. That's some kind of shield that's going to heal you. The last thing I really need right now. Or yeah, that's something you can try to test in some of these games. See if you can build a character that's so broken that you could outheal the damage you would take from drowning or fatigue or something. Some kind of mechanic that's meant to just kill you. Priest and wow, out heals fatigue out at sea. And just swims to the edge of the earth. I don't know what... Uh, what this place is, or how you get inside. Play the Sharkman Deeps here, and the Sharkman Shaman. Something's maybe hitting me? I, I can't even tell. It could be like those cannons from before. Can't do anything with that. Peaceful hills. Doesn't really feel peaceful or like hills to me here. Like maybe the whole area constitutes the dungeon, but it doesn't really work like it was before. 
trying to figure out the mystery of this place. It's showing those objectives. I assume those bounty pads would be a good indicator. Let, let's see if we can do this. You get through. Okay, so it restricts you there, which is only fair enough. Except you can't use maybe the most fun mechanic in combat then to literally trip up your enemies. Just put a block in front of them or to sort of uh, destroy the ground underneath them and cause them to fall into a hole or something. Makes it seem like this would be it, but I just can't tell. Maybe it just doesn't want me to do it. Oh, maybe I thought that was the roof, but it's actually just the end of the water. Or no, I think I think you do just end up hitting the roof. What a weird thing. This is how the other ones worked, at least. You can even maybe hear them above you. You would think it would really say something like, oh, you need to be in a group to do this one, which I hope... Oh, what the fuck? Wait a second. Oh, it's kind of baiting you by thinking, oh, keep going higher up. It's just randomly here. Which, that doesn't even look like something you're meant to go through. There was still, like, one-shotting a lot of stuff. Fair enough. Uh, okay. The two is going to be good if we're in trouble life-wise, which I'm being a little bit reckless now. The old Lilith technique now, as I call it, where, where she baits you into face tanking stuff. I guess I won't look at the loot during combat. Don't read the flavor text during combat. Good rules to follow. Okay, it's kind of hard to avoid them the way I'm playing. You gotta use your roll more. Pretend like they are doing a meaningful amount of damage, even if they're not for now. It makes it look like some of that stuff's about to come back to life. Teleport between locations, which means that would probably take me outside. Oh, this place is kind of bustling with stuff. And yeah, the combat's actually very different than I thought it was going to be. And mostly for the better. I thought it would still be more like tab targeting Reliant and stuff. Not actually Souls-like. Which is maybe unfair to even give the Souls games credit for that, but... It, it is one of those kind of things where you can't even tell maybe what the boss type enemy is, or at least at this point. The old Diablo problem, speaking of that again. Like, there's so much shit going on and so many enemies that you just kill everything anyway, so you won't even be able to distinguish the boss from just a regular, you know, one of the regular enemies. Not only do you not have to do it in a group, but it's a joke. I'm gonna live to eat those words at some point, aren't I? At least we resolve the concerns about the water. You could go in here and throw a grenade, or maybe this is what it's gonna be more of than anything else, is just the... It's going to be a lot of quantity of enemies. And a lot of traps, which is kind of fun. Play the Shark Man Deep Seer. Fuck. And you can't destroy the traps, you just kind of have to deal with it. Or maybe you can blow it up with your, with your other things. So we got a whole bunch of things here. This is better, I guess. 5% critical damage. 2% speed. We picked up a whole bunch of stuff. 51 maximum health and regen. Oh, we should be reading the, the flavor text on these too. Keep your eyes on the prize. It smells fear in the air is instantly drawn to it. Some small seafaring craft must have lost must have lost it at sea. Leave the wait, this is rare, but it's not better. Minus 66 maximum health, zero physical damage. Wait, what? 39 physical damage. Oh, just at what you're gaining. Leave the bigger fish frying for more seasoned adventurers. All right, this one's just better. And then... Okay, all this stuff we already had. He must be in, like, some other portion of this. So it is a much bigger scale one that even... No, but these are all connected. The hardest part about this place is just finding where the enemies actually are. Or even where the dungeon was in the first place. Okay, so this place is all the same. There must be some other layer to this. Nothing above here that I can see. I assume it's saying that as in for this area, right? Slay the shaman 
deeps here, and there's no X around it either. It's always got to be like inside of something, though. It's not just going to be like randomly out here. Objective completed. That was the other one, though. That was actually kind of tricky how they put the... the those little waterfalls just make it seem like there's nothing there. Assuming it has to be in here somehow. We already did those, and I assume they all connect. It would have to be something like here. This is quite the mystery. I could just go and do another one, obviously, but I want to keep track mentally of like which ones have I done. So I've only done those two to the left. So now I'll do the rest in the water, and then it'll be easier to keep track of, I guess, as we go through land. Huh, this one is tough to figure out. Maybe we just missed him somehow. Like how I was saying, you just mistake him for a normal enemy. But you would think he would have aggroed to me anyway. You'll have to just destroy this to complete it. I mean, the traps still keep going, even if you've done everything there. Shark Man Deep Seer. Or maybe we have to do this. I assume that'll just take me outside, though, like a lot of the other ones did. Yeah, see, so you could build uh, traps for your own house like this, too, or something. Could potentially be a mechanic if somebody tries to break in, which I don't know how much that's actually going to be a factor. But sometimes it'll, this will take you deeper into the dungeon, and sometimes it'll... Okay, let's just wait, wait. Do the two, so it's going to heal you. Has a reasonable cooldown, so I assume the potion would too, but I don't know if it actually does. I used to only use one before. So this must be the boss, because he has slightly more health than everybody else. This is a bit of a face tanky tendency for now, but it is what it is. Pretty strong chest. He was actually stronger than the boss itself. All right, so this will take me outside. Okay, that one was actually cool because it forced you to actually use your brain and actually try to figure out how to find the place. That was the hardest thing about it. Let's see what maybe we haven't read something. What, what is that? Sharp swimmer metabolizes water suspended iron into its scales. Better for me to smash open treasure chest. Like, it's going to be mine pretty soon. All the rage with the kids ever since the animated series. We saw that. Originally belonging to a legendary pirate. We've seen that. Nothing like a spot of primordial fury to face the hardships of life. Unscored surface. Okay. Plan foes with little fuss or fanfare. Lays, rest, lays to rest storm spirits, dread pirates, and terrors from the deep. Originally belonging. Okay, we've seen that. Leave the bigger fish to fry. Thumb. Okay, seen that. Fear in the air, drawn to it, keep your eyes on the prize. Seemingly part of a larger machine, original purpose of mystery, lost to time. Sharp and well balanced, perfect for the kitchen and the battlefield. So yeah, this you can just break open yourself, which is interesting. I thought there would be something more to it, like, oh, it's stopping you from doing it because of a quest, or it wants you to be in a group, or whatever the case may be. But it's pretty good about letting you solo stuff. And let me look at what I actually have. Oh, here's where it tells you the abilities. Stats, 253, blah, 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 doesn't matter. Retribution. Every time the knight takes damage, they will store up retribution that increases damage for their next attack. This can stack up to three times dealing additional damage for each stack. Basic attacks reduce targets, outgoing damage by 10%. Additional stacks re-refresh the buff. Damages and briefly taunts all enemies in a cone, so you would be the tank class, which doesn't really matter for now. I mean, that's just your uh, power attack anyway. So it, it presumably does... I guess it doesn't say it does more damage, it just does damage, period, than like your base attack. So it might be pointless to do that if you're solo. Launches the night forward, taunting, stunning, and damaging. Oh, so they're definitely placing an emphasis on the taunt. And damaging passing enemies. If there's only five classes, too, this might be the only one. Or the candy knight thing might be, too. Fully heals the knight. Oh, fully heals. Holy shit. Uh, let me do that again. Fully heals a knight and reduces incoming damage by 50%. Seven nearby trobians take... Yeah, there are no nearby anything. And redirect 10% of incoming damage. Oh, that could fuck me over, though. There'll be seven people fighting their own things, and it'll think that I'm grouping with them. We're all minding our own business, just happen to be in the same quadrant, the same general area, and I'll absorb their damage and die because of it. This is the kind of sabotage that can happen. Or that would happen if you're a big streamer. Like, they'll deliberately try to troll you by doing that. This is so cool, though. I could just go around and do every single dungeon myself. 
This little bird appears to have lost its mother, so you're in charge of it for now. <laughs> on my head. 39 physical damage. It gives no lip, but it takes big bites. Star of many a summer blockbuster. Oh, come on. It really shouldn't do that where you can't move and do it. A slow mount. There has to be a better way to travel. Dude, look how spoiled and entitled the modern day of gamers are. They're even accusing that. You don't even deserve to have that. I'm just enjoying walking around and flying around. You don't need to fucking... How do you even do it again? I forgot. What? I must have just unequipped it. Or maybe I got rid of it somehow? What happened? Oh, each thing is like in its own category. Uh, what else do we have here? Mag Rider. 25 movement speed. Rattle and roll along the rail towers. Chip. Wings. A lot of different mobility focused things. Hold your jump key while in the air to unfurl your ring wings. Maybe I should make it so that you're not allowed to do that. But it doesn't really seem to... You know, make things too easy or anything. So the lighthouse might be a dungeon. That seems like the only thing it could be, or it could be underwater. I gotta remember how to actually use the mount, but then again, I kind of don't even want to. Wonder if it could work in the water. Seahorse. Or see, even this makes you go faster because you're not swimming for a period of time. Not that you swim too slowly anyway. In fact, you walk super slowly. That's a way for them to try to force you to use the the mitigation there instead of just you know running away too much that's actually the problem i was complaining about in overwatch like how you can just you know you stray back and forth so fast that you sort of that somehow looked like a friendly or a shopkeeper oh quite the death sound and look at that the guy's head is rattling around that's kind of dark for a kid's game um yeah, like how you can stray back and forth so quickly that it kind of renders aiming redundant at least if your aim is as shit as mine Yeah, so we're in here. It can be a little tricky to figure out how to enter these sometimes. And of course, I always assume that's leading you out back out, but obviously it doesn't have to be that way. The one thing we don't actually have is like a shield as far as like our gear. Maybe you just can't. You're tanking with a two-handed weapon. Like a DK or some shit. Cursed skulls. Activate the cursed skulls. Oh, maybe that just means you get absolutely rolled over. But you probably had to do that to progress anyway. I mean, the fact that a lot of this stuff taunts is kind of pointless anyway. Not really taking any meaningful amount of damage. So for the time being, I can just kind of face roll. Heals you. Reduces damage. Crimson Serpent Dao. Power rank 10, uncommon melee, contemporary, and rival of the original Sea Wolf. The Crimson Serpent usually met its end at the latter's hand. This is not in your collection. Okay. Oh, they're even giving credit to who designed it, as in, like, maybe players made some of this stuff. And, like, it goes in for quality control vetting or whatever. Like, if it's not good. That's kind of cheap, though, in a way. Like, oh, they're making the community do their work for them. But three stars. How many stars is mine, then? Leave the bigger fish frying. Now, that was on a rare item before. So, what does that mean? It's, it's just a rare version of it. Recycling names and flavor text already. I guess it doesn't show you that. Or, it, it shows zero stars. But it's so good. Right, so, there's another one. Over here. So I have a pretty clear idea, actually, of which ones I've done. Uh, I hate the fact that that keeps going away. Um... We did the two on the left, we did the big one there, we did this one. We're getting hit by something while we're looking at the map. The one time I don't jump to clear it. Moving doesn't clear that, but jumping does. Honor Allure. Uncommon hat. This pretty parrot seems perfectly happy to be... Yeah, why are they making hats into, like, animals? Like, we have a chicken or something. Pretty parrot seems perfectly happy perched off your head. This is not... Okay, Rajib. Let's open the bag. Oh, whoops. Little microtransaction menu. That is one annoying thing. Why doesn't it just let you move around while you're uh, looking at menus and stuff? That's the perfect time to do it. You're on some kind of long trek around the big world and you sort of just want to dick around and, and read through flavor text or something. Shark Man Shaman. Already level 6, although I don't know what the max level is. 
I like the parkour element, just sort of implied that you have to find out, you know, how to get places. Okay, these things are always a good indicator, though, of how to do that. Okay, I was kind of scared of going in these, because I always thought they would just take me back outside. So now we know. 914 health. Okay, get rid of this. That's always the safety cushion, too, that an MMO or any multiplayer game can do. It's like, if you make it a quality experience in a single-player thing, then you don't have to worry about, oh, the servers die out, so nobody's going to want to play it for that reason. Although, I guess they wouldn't have died out in the first place if people wanted to play it, but it makes them more evergreen because then people don't mind playing it solo anyway. Rusty Ramrod. 20 physical damage. That's the sad part, is that originally used to prepare ceremonial salvos. It has fallen on hard times. Completely devoid of texture, it deals damage with no pain. Like, a lot of people find, myself included, like the value of an MMO is like, wow, when I first played Tibia, or if you first played WoW or EverQuest or whatever, this world is way bigger than any game I've ever played, any single player game. Because they put more into it because of whatever the case may be, the bigger budget and stuff than a lot of games would have. So let's try to do all the bottom two in the water just to make it clear like what trajectory we're taking of course somebody did the one on the very bottom there on the land so we, we won't be able to do that <clears throat> like <laughs> mmos will give you that open world single player experience you always want but then they're never quite that big like even as impressive as oblivion and skyrim and stuff like that are they're not nearly as big as a lot of mmos like i think oblivion's maybe one tenth the size of classic wow Never mind, you know, over all the expansions, how much bigger it got. You almost would like to see one that maybe, okay, you can keep releasing DLC for Skyrim for 10 years, as much as they already milked it through re-releases and stuff, but keep releasing more and more, and then by the time you're done with it, it'll ha it'll be as big as actually one of these worlds. Because it might feel like quantity over quality still, but... Somehow, a lot of these games still have a lot of depth, even in the old days. I mean, by today's standards, you would expect it. I almost do want to try the other classes, but... Yeah, why, why have I been on this binge of picking all, always the most boring class? Deliberately, like, oh, let's be the ranger in Anthem, but I guess that's only because I died. I do have that sort of minimalistic tendency. It's like, I'm almost saving it. I know the other class will be more exciting, so I, I don't want to play them. So we have something to look forward to. Or like, it's kind of stupid to play a, a class that's relegated to a role. Like, oh, all your abilities will taunt stuff. So it's the worst class to play as solo, but it doesn't matter, I guess. I'll make it work. Want to sell Dormant Dragon Egg. Maybe that becomes a mount that you can ride then later. Didn't they say they were going to add that as a feature too in like Dragonborn? You'd be able to ride dragons around the overworld of Skyrim. But then I don't think they ever did it. Plain grain. Completely devoid of texture. No pain. I think mine is still better than most of the stuff. Rare. Although the other rare one wasn't too good. Oh, here we go. Another puzzle. Activate the cursed skulls. That's going to be a core mechanic. If you go further down into it. I love the amount of traps, too. In fact, I'll if you calculate it out, I've probably taken more damage from the traps than you have from the monsters themselves. They die so fast that it makes me less concerned with trying to mitigate them, which I'm sure will come back to bite me later, but I should try to do some encounters where I'm actually trying not to get hit. First skulls. Oh, let's clean what's on our plate. Always have this OCD tendency that I have to kill like every single thing. Even as OCD as I'm being as, as trying to do every dungeon. But that's the whole fun of it, I guess. Yeah, so this will spawn a whole bunch of shit at once. Good timing. We one-shot those clowns. I like that. Trying to judge how much of an AoE that thing actually does with the uh, right-click. The only thing that's wrong with this so far, and of course it might change later, is just the values are kind of too... You can take a punch without flinching. 46 health. Restless Rolly. 64 health. Stomachs and Cs often disagree. One of those seems like it might be an upgrade. Th there are two keybinds that keep confusing me, which is the inventory with the B and then uh, 
or even just the fact that everything cancels out. Zero health, zero movement speed. Must be the same thing I'm using, or... I guess we'll change it just for the cosmetic then. 3% attack speed. Open crafting table for... Chaos chest. Open crafting material, chaos cores, and collectibles. This, the featured rare collectibles change weekly. Cannot be traded. I guess I'll just save that loot box. You're giving me loot boxes in a MMO now? Is, is this what it's come to? They haven't been too annoying about trying to get you to buy microtransactions up. What the hell is that supposed to be? Is this an, oh, just to show, oh, that's cool. To show in the world, even if you don't want to use the map that somebody has done it. We getting too careless with the, uh, Let's do the whole seafaring adventure, like just all the ones in the sea. So we did all these. These axes are all mine, except for the bottom one on land. So just to memorize in case they go away or something. We haven't done the four kind of adjacent to the land here in a line. And then we haven't done the two under it. So there's six more in the water. And then we'll start doing the ones on land. I hope these start to get bigger too. This is good kind of just to get around quicker too. And you can kind of spam it. You can do it even when you're in the air. But that was such a sick way in WoW. To, uh, how, how many WoW references, of course. Um, like you'd be falling off a cliff. That was one of the most badass moments ever. Like you get knocked off a cliff by somebody or, or in PvP or something. And then you charge into somebody before you hit the ground. Something else or into an enemy. And that would actually keep you from dying of fall damage. It was such an like unexpected thing that rarely happened. Who's making all that noise? You there, check out that noise, the old Mr. Smite. Yeah, my character really likes. I don't know why it's so obsessed with putting animals on your head like that. It's not even saying like, oh, it's one that's modeled after a hat. It literally is the hat. Like a live chicken or a live something else. Yeah, who needs to do building in a game where that's the whole, you know, core mechanic? Let's just build up our treasure trove instead, am I right? Just by killing stuff. Little, like, sleeping bag thing. These things are very loud, so you certainly can't be caught off guard by them. Fully conditioning me with the old face tank Frank technique. Originally belonging to legendary pirate. How many legendary pirates could there possibly be? A little preening keeps things tidy even in the roughest seas. 51. Whiskers. That sounds kind of like it would look pretty cool, actually. Minus 13 maximum health. <clears throat> okay, which ones now? We have three left in the water. Or three left in the adjacent water, and then we'll do the two. I'd be such a completionist with these, actually. Just keep going and do every single goddamn one. How come there's none at the top, though? How can there be such a wide open area? Like, on the right and the top, whereas there's so goddamn many at the bottom here. Yeah, I wonder how much of this was made by, like, the community, or... Because they keep giving credit even for the items. Or maybe those aren't community members. They're actually still developers with it or i don't know yeah that's the most genius idea when you're a small indie company just make a game that allows people to make the game for you like even with minecraft build your own game make your own fun or even just like this you should be able to destroy though right oh, i want to kill an enemy like by doing that or dump them in an endless pit um make a game like uh, even dreams or anything where you know the community can build their own stuff so why would you even need to develop it yourself Look at this, look at this. We're gonna dump him in the bottom of the ocean. And he won't be able to do anything about it either. Imagine doing this to like a player in PvP somehow strategically. He can't even get up. He can't even catch me. But he'll never really necessarily die because of it. But yeah, let's see how far into the bottom of the earth we can go. Not by going in myself and risking my life, but by doing it to this guy. It's for science, I swear. I'm not just trying to torture this poor thing, which is trying to kill me, to be fair. I'm not worried about my breath. I'm not worried about this thing actually killing me or anything. Kind of a cool experiment you can do. How far under the earth will it let me go? And if we go far enough to kill it, we get a special prize. He's still going, dude. 
have to do it in such a way that we uh, we don't get hit by him, but we don't also have to be so far away. So many of these games that I've been playing, I can make a whole series out of that would go on for a super long time. Because all my series do tend to go on for a while. But I don't know why I even need the enemy if, if I'm doing this. Like, I can just do it myself. But just in case it will kill me. Or like, look, my regen is better than his damage does. I can just clown the guy. Look at this, look at this. The defensive ace. Journey to the center of the earth, starring whoever that was. I can't remember now, Ice, right? But this must be it. This is actually as deep as you can possibly go. How come we didn't run into the old gods or something? That's it, though? Yeah, I could hide here if people were trying to kill me in PvP now. If it wasn't under underwater, you would have a lot of trouble actually getting out of there because... Or in that sense, you almost wish you could have people drown because you could troll somebody, like, even if you're not hostile with them and there is no PvP. I could trap somebody at the bottom by burying them like that and then they'll drown before they can get out of it. All these troll things, even when it's not presented as a possibility, I come up with my own way. The Cubesly guy wants to, uh, wants me to go back, but I don't really care. I wonder if you could put these traps somewhere out yourself. If you're capable of building these same structures. You you would think you theoretically would be able to. Or again, you could like design your own dungeon and pass it for community inspection or at least... God damn it. I'm barely even using my abilities. I'm barely even trying to avoid them for the time being. It's fine. Low level gameplay. 22, 2%. Not quite ready to eat, but effective for bait and switching. You're attacking something with food, and then you're going to be wearing an animal on your head. Not exactly very efficient, but very resourceful. This takes you back outside. So now we have two more in the water. Or sorry, four more in the water. And then we, we can't do that one with the axe, though. That guy's going to cuck us, whoever did that one. on The first one on the bottom there. And I don't know how long it takes for them to reset, but it seems like it's been done for a while. What a weird guy, too. He came, he did one dungeon, and he left. I guess maybe because that's all you have to do to, to progress with the quest or whatever. So he's like the human function and I'm the human being. Like the old uh, debate phrase. Like uh, he just does whatever he's told. Which you're supposed to do in the linear game of life. It's weird that you don't have a breath system though. I was kind of expecting that you would. I wonder how different this is, too, than when it first came out. That's always a good question to consider, like... I don't know, like Final Fantasy Online. I just played the other week for the first time, and... You start with 10,000 mana, and <laughs> that is awesome how they put the axe out in the overworld, too. How come I didn't see that on the other ones? Yeah, you start with, like, 10,000 mana base, and you can never run out. No matter how much you spam your abilities at the early level. So, why would they start you with your endgame mana value? As we move out by the water. I haven't really used that mechanic at all though. As far as like warping back there. Or in fact what I actually want to do is. Let's maybe save these two. It'd be annoying if I was competing for these with other people. Because I kind of want to do every single one. But I guess it doesn't really matter. <laughs> That's the whole beauty of it. I, I turn a negative into a positive. See the glass half full. Where a dead game means I have it all to myself. And here it, it is kind of a meaningful thing. I almost get the impression there isn't PvP or there'll only be PvP in like a very scripted specific way. It's not like if you see a player here, they're going to come and try to kill you. To make it more kid friendly, you can't just get ganked and stuff. Although that can sometimes be the most fun thing because you never know when or if that, that sort of encounter might happen. Make the players do your work for you, making the game exciting in the sense that you sort of get to... I wish I sort of had a shield ability. Like, even though this heals you, I want it to be more like active. I can like block what they're doing or knock it back at them. Now this is kind of like a clone texture thing that we've already done in the sense that we, we just saw a dungeon exactly like this. 3%, 2%, special served by superior goose cookers, channels its wielder to wielder's capacity to change the cosmos. Not quite ready to eat, we saw that. 
seemingly part of a larger machine. We've seen that. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm supposed to do with all this. Am I? Can I sell it somewhere? I guess I haven't seen that mechanic yet. Not in your collection, even though I have it right there. Adventure mode, crafting mode, inventory, uh, modules, geode. This is going to be a problem, actually. Maybe I just have to toss it out. Or, like, how would I even do that? You can, like, put it in the trash. Are you sure you want to do that? Lost forever. Maybe I should go back to town and figure out how to sell stuff once we finish our water adventures. And then we can always come back. A lot of traps, but no enemies. Shit. But I'll probably fill in my inventory even before that happens. At least we get a lot more enemy variety here. It is actually very hard to avoid these gunslinger guys. Some of these just aren't big enough, though. Fish stick, we've already seen like a million times. And this, we've seen. I'm assuming if those are players who made them, then they even wrote the flavor text, too. Not that I'm even bashing games that, that benefit from community content, but it does feel kind of a little bit cheap, right? Like you're, you're letting them do their work for you a lot of the time. And that, that's what the whole appeal of games is. Although I disagree with that when people say that about Skyrim. Like I play the game thousands of hours without using mods, but then the mods are also just the icing on the cake. Let's do this final boss, big fortress in the middle after these little two little ones. Wait for this other clown thing to respawn. So every single thing on land, I haven't done. And I might even be overloving myself. It makes it seem like it's there, but it must be above me, maybe? Must be this. You actually do have to spam it, too. Holding it doesn't actually do anything. Hmm, it seems like it's a little bit to the right of the structure, actually, but unless it's... No, this is it. Okay. This is almost giving me like little Wind Waker vibes. Just go from island to island freely. This is the Wind Waker that we, we deserve but didn't get. Because that was sort of toying with the idea of being an open world game. An open sea game. Where you can just uh, sail around and do random little mini dungeons on different islands. The only problem with it is it's still locked behind the whole... Yeah, and with Bre Breath of the Wild we finally get that. The Zelda games kind of flirted with that. Like people always say, oh the original one was kind of open world. And... Uh, Wind Waker trying to be Majora's Mask tried to be a little bit in the sense that you could keep resetting time and doing some of the same stuff over and over or in like different orders and then Twilight Princess kind of was open-ended as far as Hyrule Field, but Not really a true open world experience But yeah, Wind Waker had that whole conception, but the problem is oh you need a bomb to get through this area on this island Or you need something to activate it to be able to get inside there. So at some point they realize like that's just not Always the greatest design because it forces you okay You could you can go to any island at once you get your ship, but you can't do everything on every island so You'd have to wait before you actually Come back at a very scripted point so I'm the type of person who would go to every single island at the beginning of the game and just see what you can do and then realize that oh 90% of it you can't do so it's still the illusion of of openness blade to storm to rest storm spirits dread pirate okay we've seen that why I don't know what this means in your collection I guess I have to like build a box in my house and and put the stuff in there maybe immersion eyewear for adventurers who are just getting their feet wet more like a VR headset am I right uh, it has seen too much strife both on land and at sea uh, let's see if any of that stuff is an upgrade. Press every wrong hotkey. Uh, one energy regen, 5% crit, 2% attack speed. A lot of the itemization is sort of repeating over itself. Okay, let's do the tiny one first. Then we'll take a bra break, go back to our house, and sort of either put stuff in there, or I'll try to sell it, or I'll try to maybe build something. It does seem like a shame not to use the building mechanic if you're going to be playing a game like this. That's one of the great strengths of it, although I did just see how far you can go towards the earth. Now let's see how high we can build it. Because clearly there is no fall damage anyway. So let's like burn all my resources. Oh, here we go. New enemy type. Let's uh, see, hypothetically, if I was try trying to build my... Uh... Wait, how do I do this again? Shit. 
All right, so my hypothesis that they won't attack you when you're in building mode is obviously completely wrong. Uh, you go into here, you go into here, and then let's say we were trying to do this. I mean, I'll be able to build it a thousand blocks up at least, but or you should maybe start from a high point already. I keep trying to build it on myself. If you just keep jumping up, this should be exactly what you want to see. Oh, uh, is this tree going to fuck me over? Gonna ru rush right up against it. Let's see how how far we can go with this. We can go at least a thousand blocks into the sky. In fact, you could measure it then and see how how many what x number of blocks did you actually go. But then again, you'd have to get, start from the water. The two things you always have to try in these games, even though I'm potentially putting my life at risk, it'd be much scarier to do this in Minecraft or something if you just slip and fall off. You don't have these sexy wings to carry you, literally. I can't tell if I've already reached a, a point where it's not going, right? It, it starts to look so similar after a while, you can barely tell. Uh, can't really measure it against anything. You would think it would just stop me altogether. Oh yeah, like now it, it's not, or is it? Or yeah, you can keep doing that to kind of gauge the comparison. It won't just let you go forever. Although it's not like this benefits you anyway. We can just do like the longest flight that we've ever seen. How did I even do that? I have to go like a little bit out. Uh-oh. Yeah, how did I so willingly uh, build? Oh, there we go. I wonder how much building during combat potential there actually is, because that's what people always love to do. That's why they like Fortnite so much. You're about to get killed, but just build a house in front of your opponent and they can't do anything. As if simply avoiding or killing them wouldn't be easier than doing that, but somehow that just ends up being the, the meta of it. Okay, how long is this actually going to go on for? Or did I reach the end? No, I keep thinking I did. Just look in, in combination to the X's, like how far we actually are. That's probably the funniest design thing they've, they've done. They want to show the X literally in the overworld. In a way, it's kind of immersion breaking and maybe stupid and bothers people, but I kind of like it. Then you never have to use the map. So what is more immersion breaking? Using the map or not using it or seeing uh, sort of a UI tooltip out in the overworld? Oh, is this it? Well, I am super high up. I guess there is no way to really measure it. How many did I use? Like maybe 150 something? You can go like maybe 200 blocks into the air and maybe below, assuming that, you know, the structure under where we started building this was. Now imagine how scared you would be in any other game, but you can just do this. You could fly for as goddamn long as you want, but you can't really control the arc, so at least. And we still land in the water, not that we really needed to even. Okay, last two. Thankfully, nobody hijacked it from us. That is one weird uh, capture feature of this, is the fact that even though I... Even though it is showing up on stream, it's not actually showing up in OBS, so it, it does make me nervous. Something's not quite right about it. So it does work with game capture, but only selectively. Only, I guess, in the way that really matters. Look how long that axe took to go away, though, for this dude. It really does take them a long time to respawn. Or at least it should... If it's going to be an instant thing, why shouldn't it just let everybody do their own thing, I guess? But not a big deal. I'm actually a big fan of that whole idea of competing for resources in an MMO. The only problem is a lot of the time I like to play MMOs solo, so it doesn't matter to me then. Right? Like, there's a certain mood that you're in. In fact, Tibia wasn't the kind of game where it expected you to really group up. You could, but you could really play it very solo, too. Whereas it was very grindy, like, you'll get to a threshold where you just have to keep killing the same enemies over and over, or, you know, just get fucked by something way stronger. It's gonna be right here. I mean, I guess we could go to a new area altogether, but I was kind of enamored with the idea of doing every single one. Either way, I'll make a pit stop back at the house or whatever, which we can make kind of wherever I want it to be. Oh, look at that. We kind of juked him. Kill him midair. That's pretty badass. Oh, look at, look at that timing, although I still missed it, but... 
Not using the roll enough. I'm trying to think like how maybe I could make it more difficult e even in the early game, but I guess I'll just wait for it to get difficult naturally, which it's so far really hasn't been. Plain grain. And assuming it would be even easier if you had people with you, because it doesn't seem like it would scale up or anything. It's just it is what it is for now. That you'd be one shotting people, so you wouldn't even be able to appreciate the fact that you're in a group because everything would die. You know, you'd be killing them twice in every every second like there wouldn't be enough for everybody to even do which is kind of how i feel about anthem too if it doesn't scale with you like it's so easy to do i've been even playing on hard mode even on solo in a game that even recommends that oh you should play with other people i wonder if the lava would instantly kill you it probably shouldn't but fortress like the road that leads to the gilded goal that gilded goal the void of texture yeah i wonder how that would work because at this level it's not only Pointless to group up, or you certainly don't need to, but it would make it even more redundant when I'm already, like, one-shotting stuff. Okay, final boss of this area, of the C section, which you certainly wouldn't have had to do it this thoroughly or in this order. We can check out the desert ones, the grass ones on the bottom, there's some stuff on the top. There's a lot of empty space, though, or maybe... Oh, I get it. It's only showing these ones because it's within my field of vision, because it gets, like, dark around the outside. Maybe that's what it is. Because it doesn't make sense that he's just kind of like a deer in the headlights. Um, yeah, it doesn't make sense that there'd be such a density of the dungeons here and then none anywhere else. Oh shit, look at that. Trying to get a cheap shot on me. Let's see how we even get up here. Like this isn't right, but we can kind of make our own way there. It is very true to the sandbox whole idea. In fact, this is one of the better examples of how you can do a sandbox feel. Because it doesn't make it feel like you have to do anything in particular. You don't have to do quests. You don't have to do... How would I even get up there? That is sometimes the biggest challenge here. The platforming aspect or just figuring out how to, how to reach them. Oh, it wants you to go there and then ride like a rail to it. You might have to keep stopping along the way. It might be the first time actually we've used the rail thing since the tutorial. It looks like this might be a way in. Bunch of ladders, but only losers use ladders? Fuck. <laughs> well, I guess... In fact, let's try to do it. That's a hard mode challenge. No ladder usage run. Come on. Oh, it's the flying that's actually kind of messing me up there a little bit. Just the fact that I'm trying to rely on the double jump only. Okay, so we can jump over to here and then... Oh, fuck. Damn it. The right idea, at least. Fine, fuck it, I'll use it. Or how do you even use it? What? Whatever, that just shows you my natural aversion to even wanting to do it in the first place. Talk shit about the ladder and then it won't serve you anymore. Fuck off. Okay, losing the platforming in a single player MMO sandbox combat focused game. It even said that on there too. Like, oh, it's an action packed game on like the Steam page or, or the description, which is not really the first thing I would think of them as describing it. You would think they would try to sell it on the point of the building or the creativity, and the action is more just like a bonus, but. Okay, you obviously don't have to do it this way, but let's just do it for the fuck of it. Go up to here. Oh, come on. This is fine. This is fine. Now what? Gotta get up to the top of that somehow. I actually genuinely don't even know how you use the ladder. Somehow we get to the railroad track from this top right area. Oh shit, they're getting impatient and even trying to come after me now even the ai gets impatient with me that's how slow i am i still don't think this really works because it's kind of like you got to be above where the ladder is holy shit why am i struggling to do this so much still more building in the initial experience or at least the opportunity to than uh oh my god than Roblox, because that didn't place any emphasis on it at all. It basically, I was just playing maps that other people made, but 
it, it didn't really seem to incorporate that into the gameplay ever. Right? Like, either you build a map for people to play on, or you just play on a map. I thought it would be part of the core gameplay of what you're doing, no matter what. How did I do that before? They certainly don't mean for you to do it like this. Okay, all you have to do is... Yeah, like that should be fine. That's one way to climb a ladder. I just go slow, go slow. Haven't struggled that much to climb a ladder since playing Overwatch the other day, let's say. Fuck. Or in fact, I'm not even playing in ranked because they t they make you wait so long to unlock it. Or I'm just so dog shit that they feel like I don't even deserve to be in it. Okay, here we go. This is actually going to be a big dungeon too. Wait, what? Well, at least now we know. X? No, that's an X in the distance, huh? What, what is this place? Huh. Why would it even bother doing that? Or I guess that's just a quick way to get in. So I could jump from maybe the top of this. It's gonna be pretty hard to get there, I think, still not. Fuck. At least now we know maybe where that portal is. I don't have to do that shit again. This is actually kind of hard to figure out. So that would have been available even if you don't... Even if I didn't hit the one at the top, but that's kind of the right, honorable way to do it. Huh. I don't know how the respawns and the resets work on some of these towers and all, either. Okay, this might be the same one that we saw. So clearly from there, it wants you to go on the rails, but... Where would they start? Or, oh, you could easily just, like, jump down onto them. Try to get me with a bait trap already. These things are just way too weak. And, of course, you can't destroy the turrets. Fuck. This is, like, kind of an outdoor one, though. At some point, we must have to enter into it. They normally haven't been out in the open. It's totally like doing those pirate outposts in, in Wind Waker. You would just be uh, sailing around and it's not even an island. It's just like a little, you know, wooden structure in the middle of the sea. Like a tower that you can just go and kill a couple pirates, loot a chest. So it's, it's very much trying to flirt with the idea of sandbox gameplay all those years ago. They seem to keep wanting to, to go in that direction, but they couldn't go all the way there. And then once they saw the success of the genre, which I always say it's not even a genre. Any game and any genre could potentially be open world. But once they see, oh, it's, it's like Skyrim with Zelda, like Skyrim with Link. That stupid quote from a Far Cry 3 review. Which really is nothing like Skyrim, aside from the fact that they're both open world. Then I like how similar Far Cry 4 was to Fall Far Cry 3. Like it did so well that they didn't want to change anything, so it's like literally just almost a rescan, different location. I think they're up to what, like six now? Whenever something does well, they'll beat it like a dead horse. Maybe you are gonna have to climb a ladder here eventually. I genuinely don't even know how you do it. Or maybe you can't do it, but then that's kind of a troll. These chests you obviously can't do anything with. So many goddamn traps. If anything's gonna get me killed later, that might be what it is if they start doing way more damage or something. It always encourages you the wrong way, right? Like, oh, it's so easy at the beginning of, of a lot of games where you can just tank everything. Captain Kiro mysteriously disappeared shortly after he made the after the defeat of Ladybug Armada. This is not in your collection. Oh, I might have a full inventory. There we go. Oh yeah, I'm not looking at that. Um, I mean, at least for the sake of right now, I'll throw some of this. But trash, trash, and then we'll use this as a good excuse to go back and do the. Uh, do the inventory and go to our house. Yeah, see, look at how much that's actually doing. It's because I'm standing in the fire like a moron. The number one rule of MMOs. 
Doesn't really give you bonus damage for doing a plunging attack, but your mobility is so good that I want to see some like bullet hell complex attack patterns, but I guess be careful what you wish for. Okay, so still, where is the goddamn dungeon itself? Gotta be a portal. We're gonna subvert the whole ladder thing as long as we can. Uh, what is this? I'm getting stuck. Uh, this random chains. I don't really see how that could lead to it. Play the parrot lord. Play the parrot captain. <sighs> Could it be like a portal here or something? Nothing to interact with that. Or maybe it's the opposite of what I'm doing. You have to go inside of that cave where the railroad thing goes. Or these aren't even... No, they kind of do look like that, but... It's not actually letting you use it here. Fuck. That actually does a decent amount. That's the first thing that actually makes a noticeable difference in your health. I was doing it kind of backwards, fighting my way out instead of in. Because I, I started here in the first place. Or no, I, I think I already did this, so... Maybe you have to keep going down into here? Ah, yes, of course. Doing such dog shit damage. Burden Cutlass, Star of Many Summer Blockbuster, Preferred by Ruffians and River Pirates. I'll be standing there looking at it and the fucking traps will kill me, of course. The Pyro Lord. Wait, there's another one, though. Of course, that's why it's a big... a big dungeon. We killed everybody, like, up at the top. Wait, does that mean I could have done this the whole time? I could have just entered through here. It's not even like something opened up. That's just genuinely a secret entrance. So where could the other guy be? I should do a pretty good job sometimes hiding like... Uh, I love that water one. Oh, here we go. He's going to be up at the top, but I think I already did that too. We did the top. We did this whole area. I'm pretty sure I went up here. Maybe you could keep going even further. I'm surprised they didn't put more of an emphasis on like... The uh... Or maybe this is different. No, I think I did this. On like destructible environment abilities. That portal didn't take me anywhere special. In fact, it took me down to the bottom. Gives you a good vantage point to see everything, but I actually can't figure out where this dude is. A very cool concept for a game that if you, you know, took it a little step further, it could be really spectacular. Like, I don't know, like maybe more emphasis on building and combat or like even PvP that does that. You could have a regular Fortnite, but the whole point here is you would have an actual world to... To do it in instead of the same goddamn maps over and over. Where could he be? Objective complete. Yeah, see, this one still doesn't have an axe. Or now, like, somebody's gonna kill steal it in front of me. Right from under me. So the way to get up to there is the same way that we just did. Like, from underneath. So I didn't even have to do any of that. There must be something I'm missing with one of these structures. Like you can go down into somewhere or... Everything's pretty conspicuous out, out in the open, but the objectives are always like inside of a cave or something. Hmm. Could be like maybe underneath there, but that's the same thing that we just saw. That X makes it seem like this is, it's for here, but it's in the distance. You jump down to there, but we've been there, haven't we? There's nothing here. There's nothing in that little water pit either. I don't know what the point of that even is. So how did we get to... We go here. We check down here. Maybe we can go down further, but I think it just led to the same thing at the water, at the bottom. Yeah, we did that strategically just to get bounced up by the trap. Yeah, when the traps are harder to avoid and harder to survive than the enemies themselves. 
or like a Dark Souls meme where, oh, the, the trash mobs are harder. Dark Souls 2, where the trash is harder than the bosses. Like, unironically, can be insane like that. Then again, it says the guy who spent 15 streams on the fucking Smelter Demon or whatever, and then his reincarnation with the same goddamn flavor tax. Okay, let's look around here a little bit. I'm not sure what I could have missed. Or maybe it'll be underwater somehow. Three star, or it'll be hidden behind here. That that would actually be fucking amazing. The way they they honestly try to hide stuff. It's a puzzle solving game, a detective game, a parkour game, all in one. A combat game, a building game. I genuinely don't know. It wasn't at the top there. It could, oh, it could be like lower here. Because there's like this little structure to possibly go down into. It's gonna be some entryway that I missed. Maybe not. Shallow water. Like, what is the point of this room? I don't get it. Oh, wow. Wow, dude. The way they do that is actually the best thing about it. They don't make it a mindless face roll type of thing. <laughs> it says the guy who's fucking face hanging every spike. Look at how tricky that was actually to find. I'm assuming at least this is the right thing. Wow, dude, they hide them super well. Incredible. He was kind of just asleep. Kill myself, charge through. Music is kind of too happy and upbeat sometimes, but I guess the combat is over so quickly it barely even matters. He's not really playing combat music in the same way. Oh, look at that. I even charged over that at the beginning to sort of test what it was. Captain Kiro mysteriously disappeared, same thing. Okay, we don't even need all that. That's the same stuff. I don't know what it means by, like, in your collection. Just the fact that whether you have it in your house or something. So cool. We did a clean sweep of the water. And we can teleport back home, which actually might be, like, right here. Somewhere that I just happened to... You know, you can keep changing your, your hub. I should have committed to one, though. Or... No, this takes me back to the main base. What does the T thing do? It doesn't let you mouse Oh, it does let you mouse over. Oh, the chaos chest loot box garbage. I'm sure there'll be like flying mouse and all kind of thing. That's the whole expectation too. Like you could literally do anything with this game because the graphics are so undemanding that it does allow, you know, that sort of depth of design or, or whatever. It's not going to be restricted based on that at least, despite whatever the de developer's capabilities might be. Uh... Looking stronger, meet up with me in the hub. I want to show you around. I'm near where you left me. I almost don't even care about that, but show me around to the shop, I guess. You to access the marketplace. But I want to sell stuff. Oh, rank 20. I want to sell stuff to just do like an NPC vendor, if you even can. I don't know what that is. Why to access your collections? Badges, combat, crafting, favorite and stuff, styles, travel. Access your character. Well, I mean, you can do that anyway. You don't have to be here to do it. Class selector. Grove mastery points. Uh, whatever. E to use the barber shop. Oh, actually, I didn't get to do this, I don't think, when I made my character. You know what? I'm fine with it. We'll go for the most generic class and generic appearance. Just because it make it more about the world, honestly. I, I don't want to worry about the... This is sort of like a face roll, face tank class anyway, but... Like, at least if you have to do stuff from a distance, maybe you won't be so tanky. Crafting? There's gotta be somewhere where you can just dump your stuff, aside from just your house. Or maybe that's what it wants you to do, just build a chest and put all your stuff in there. I'll never forget that. Don't starve. My first winner. I have like 50... Ch that was such a genius dynamic thing that I came up with. Of course, not knowing anything about the game. World's first blind playthrough of Don't Starve. Because it's the kind of shit that people do generally always... You know, wiki game. It's the anti-wiki game. Build like 10 chests and have rabbits in them so they don't go bad. And then you can kill them and cook them whenever you want. Right? Like you have a caught rabbit. Or, or I forget exactly how, how it would work. 
right? So, so you, if you keep the rabbits in the chest and they're they're already the meat that you have to eat, they'll they'll spoil before you survive the whole winter. But if you keep them alive in there or whatever, like ha trapped in there, not saying that you should encourage such behavior, but start following adventure, gone delving. I don't know if that means it'll teleport you there. Basically, I'm just looking for a shop. What are cursed skulls? At the end of each delve tier, cursed skulls can be interacted with to start the boss fight. Make sure your trovians are ready first. But then again, I'm solo anyway, so I'm always ready. Eat a craft. Maybe you are just meant to throw it away, but that doesn't really make sense. Gone delving. New adventure added. I'm assuming that's still something you have to... Like, I was worried it might just teleport me there. Gideon Guild Hall. Yeah, there'll be a whole bunch of random quests here. Maybe we should talk to this cube guy because then he'll show me how to sell stuff. Because he didn't expect me, I guess, to derp around that much and just get so much goddamn loot. A lot of it, which is just like cloned items anyway. Only level six though, after all that. Who is this? Topside Cash. I mean, some of this stuff might be locked behind paywalls, or at least it'll be super expensive to get if you don't have them, so it's fair enough, because... But little did you know, this is always what I say in, like, card games and stuff, joke's on you. I don't want to complete my collection and have a top-tier deck from day one. I want it to take time, because otherwise I'll get bored of it. I get to Mythic once, I get to Legend once, and then I'm done playing. Like, I don't, I don't really care, right? So I want it to be a long experience where half the fun is building up your collection and trying to work with what you have, right? So you're, you could be dealt a bad hand, literally, and, like, you, you were forced to play with a mechanic that you wouldn't do otherwise. Whereas if you had everything, it's almost like too many options... As a bad thing. Dragon Crucible. A lot of primor primal and primordial stuff. Always reminds me of the Grand. A resting place for visiting dragons. Wait, just show me a goddamn shop. Jesus Christ. Or I guess the whole point of the game is to make a trove. Make a complete collection of every item in the game and never sell anything. Or this will be like my stash that I can put stuff in. Store. Access the store. I mean, it makes it seem like, oh, you have to go there to do it, but you can do it anywhere. I want to access your claims. Diamond Dragonite. Oh, is this like one of those insidious things like, oh, if you log in every day and try to get you addicted and conditioned to the game, we'll give you a reward. No thanks. I, I play without those kind of mechanics to discourage them. The Sun Goddess Elysia. Let us to face the darkness with courage and resolve that our lady sacrifice will not be in vain. Control A to open the atlas, so that's really what I want to keep doing. Radiant Merchant. Okay, here we go. Trade your radiant. Oh, fuck. You still can't sell your, your random stuff, though. That would be such an interesting thing if they don't have that as a mechanic, that you can actually sell stuff. Okay, we saw that. Okay, where is this cubic guy again? He was near the atlas last time. Next to the sun goddess statue to the south. Sun Goddess Statue is to the south, across from the, uh, isn't this it? I mean, it would make sense, given the fact that you can forgive me for not noticing because it's all made of blocks anyway. Okay, what did he do? He leveled me up. 690 experience, you're level 7 knight, 15 mastery points, mastery rank up, level 5. I assume that's not something you can really choose to do, though. I'll have to access your claims. He's trying to force me to do it, but I don't want it. Starter Chaos Chest. Day one login. New player. Fuck off. Cubits are great, and you can earn more by paying money on your mom's credit card. By completing dungeons and filling your sta star bar, you can spend the cubits on all kinds of things in the style stash to get dragon coins. Head over to the store on the other side of the sun goddess statue and see if there are sweet deals waiting for you. You can also check the store by pressing N. But what about selling stuff, dude? Because it feels like a waste to just... Okay. Enough shopping, it's time to get back into the fray and save a life. I think you might be strong enough to withstand the cold of the permafrost. Next stop, permafrost. Well, next stop, Atlas. <laughs> Why did he say that twice? Next stop, permafrost. Next stop, Atlas. He doesn't seem to give a shit about telling me about the, uh... Selling stuff, so I guess maybe you just can't. Or, like, at least... I don't understand. 
Like, and even you'd have to do this manually. There must be something I'm missing with it, but who cares? Let's just ignore it for now. I would have thought he would have tutorialized that. Or maybe you can do it from here somehow. Credits, gems, dragon styles, more. At least they hide it away if there there is a way to do that. Control A is the atlas. L is this. Which I don't even really want. Any bonus stuff. That's the way they almost discourage that stuff too. Oh, it's so easy right now. Why would you even feel the need to buy anything? But then there'll be some difficulty spike later at the end game or something. I kind of want to do the rest of those dungeons there though still. But I guess just for the sake of progress. So like we did the water area. Or maybe it'll scale up somehow. Because how would you ever be able to do all of them? Or I guess they expect people to be competing for stuff. So this maybe is a very stupid idea, but it's fine. Or actually these things I want to keep. Just get rid of every green. I don't even want to open those insidious loot boxes. I should just destroy those, if anything. I always hate mechanics like that because they make everything feel so artificial, right? You don't even want free stuff because then it feels like everybody gets it anyway. So it's not like you're earning it. But it doesn't mean anything, right? If everybody has it. This is Newt Mask. Okay, we can just keep these two things, basically. And yeah, even put them on the bottom so you don't accidentally fuck them over. Are you sure you want to do it? But how about you tell me what to do otherwise? Only other thing I can think of is just like putting it in your house. You could build like a treasure chest or something. And then it'll tell you, oh, this is part of your collection, such and such. So I'll try to make, I'll make my house in like the frost area, like at the very beginning for now and just see. That does seem like quite a commitment though. If you only have one, then you just leave it there forever. Because then you'd have to transfer all your stuff, or maybe it just automatically does that for you. It wants me to go to permafrost. I don't know what this <coughs> even means. Geode Sanctuary. Peaceful Geodians who are under attack by the Merciless Shadows. Rank 5000 or greater. Level class 2728. Eat to venture to this adventure world. Once a home to a great empire, now a frozen wasteland where predators and phantoms prowl. Power rank 60 required. Level 4 to 5. What was my rank again? It's much higher than that, I think. I'm already over leveling my... Yeah, 177. Use the Rally Blade. You're looking a little cold. Might be warmer if you find a friend. No, fuck that. Rally Blade platform. Unless it's an actual mechanic that'll force me to do that. I love how it's saying that, too. Like... Not only do you not need that, but it's almost still too easy. I want it to be harder. Or maybe, again, the enemy's health and damage will just double if you, uh, if you have an ally. Okay, so we can destroy all this. Yeah, see, I like doing it dynamically out when you're always in danger of combat. Isn't this such a great format? Because not only am I so good at games that I naturally would never die anyway, but the beginning of a game is always so easy. So you can always just show off and get away with it. Like, yeah, first play through Bermuda. Nobody's ever done that. Nobody has the balls to do it. So where could we find potentially a house thing? I do want to see maybe a little bit of building stuff. Looking a little cold. Reward party animal. I kind of just want to do the dungeons. And I guess you don't have to go through him to get to the next area on the atlas. Like, oh, he's just unlocked the permafrost for you. I think adept difficulty. More like XQC's relationship status, am I right? That's the difficulty he has. Fuck. Um, like, I, I want to see what you can craft and all. Yeah, now when I actually need the houses, there aren't going to be any. Or maybe they're only meant to be in that friendly grass area. I like I'm literally one-shotting most of the stuff. It's not like I'm doing anything special. Or I guess I did maybe over-level a little bit. At least we solved our water concern. And not only did we did it, we sort of embraced that. Oh, it felt like I couldn't zoom out before. This place still has some grassy areas. I would like to go through and do all, all these dungeons too. Slay the Drail Lich. But it just says that because you're in the... Or Draco Lich. You know, I kind of want to keep track though of the exact order I'm doing them in. So, even if some of them are taken. Okay, let, let me go back and find... 
maybe like just a house to dick around with. That is the mechanic we haven't really tried out. Like, if I go to control A and go to, like, there. Right? There were so many here. It's weird that they're just out in the wild, like, where the enemies are. Like, right here. Just do this one. That looks so much like a Mario question mark block. Yeah, now what can I do with all this? E barbershop in your house? Crafting. Okay, let's see what we can actually make. Loot collector. Collect styles while breaking them down into flux. Forge your equipment by using flux. Oh, this is what I should have just used all my shit for, no? Yeah, this I've completely neglected. Now, whenever I come back, I can break down the shit and then use it to craft more stuff shortly. So, what even happened? Where did it go? Oh, like here, loot collector, spring beetle wall trophy, common compostable, placeable in a cornerstone or club world only. Uh, Sharkman Raider wall, wall Trophy. Placeable in a cornerstone or a club wall only. So how do I place it then? Oh, you can put it like probably into here, I bet. We'll put it on two, three. And then it'll let me like maybe build it the same way as anything else. Oh, that's cool. So there's a couple trophies already. Like, uh, you go out, you kill some big boss, and then you put their head on your mantle place. Oh, that's pretty badass. This one I can't really appreciate exactly. Damn, dude, that's so awesome. Yeah, you want to get one of everything in the world, but this house won't be big enough to contain them. So you have to probably buy a bigger house with real money, microtransaction. Okay, four we will put, like, right here, I guess. And then loot collector. Right-click to collect item. Left-click to lock item. So I assume that means that if I... Unfortunately, I don't have anything to test it with because I just threw my shit away. Everything that I had. Like, here, I'll even give up a piece of gear since I'm so overpowered anyway. With no effort at all. Let's do, like... Yeah, get rid of your face mask. Fuck it. What does that mean? New Treasure Isles face style. So if I collect it, you get one of something that I can't even see because you can't mouse over it. You gain one mastery point for collecting the Restless Rolly style. Okay. I mean, we'll do that instead of... Maybe that's the whole name of the game. That's why it's called Trove, because you're collecting stuff from your items instead of just selling them. Yeah, this was surprisingly good, actually. Only thing I, I wish to see is, like, how much more difficult than stuff does it get later. Which, arguably, it might not even try to be that kind of game where it is trying to be difficult. But the one thing you can say is... I would, I could make it that way because it might expect you to do it with other players. So I would like to see how that sort of pans out. So for example, the, the ice area was already telling me, oh, go do it with other players. And so if I don't do it, level four to five though, I guess I'm still sort of over leveled. Or like, let's go back. Oh, it takes you back exactly to where you were too. Really, like, that's a better way to say it. The same joke. XQC lives life on adept difficulty, I guess you could say. Okay, where, where is the... Where is the... Uh, we go to here. Like, it'll let me to go to all these places, won't it? Level 8 to 9. Level 10 to 11. Rank 50. See, now, why not let me put myself life in danger and, and do all that? Like, I could skip ahead and just do it. I just want to see something challenging. That's the husk of a land plundered by an unchecked greed. Progress and the... Yeah, progress, really. And the mindless slaves of industry. Wow. Commentary on modern society. Desert Frontier Master Difficulty. Okay, let's see how masterful it really is. It wouldn't let me go here, I guess, otherwise. So it can't be that bad. Oh, that's still a joke, dude. Although I'm sure if I do a dungeon or something, that'll be that'll be something notable. Sweet succulent. Power rank 26. Is that a legendary? I love how you can do that, like jump while mid doing it. You get your hit in, but you dodge. There's 316 maximum health, 61 stability. The desert rose shows no thorns. This is not in your collection. I guess will it say the thing I just composted in my thing is gonna be part of my collection now that I did that or Maybe that still refers to something else. 
Yeah, legendary fades. That's actually what I get for composting that. Look how they're giving me fucking legendary gear and stuff, too. This guy looks like a creeper. And I'm not even just talking about my own reflection in the mirror. Ha ha ha. Uh, Cog Cleaver. 155 physical damage. Leg actual legendaries, dude. Already, you're only level 8. What did I do to deserve this? Necessity is the mother of invention, and miners beset upon the uh, upon my cactotes and sea moths were in desperate need. Uh, of course, it's much better than mine. Oh, it looks like a much wider uh, hitbox, too. I don't know where it really, really indicates that. Your health regen is just too good that this would ever become an issue. I guess we could try to do a dungeon. I kind of want to do it all in order, though. Which is not even just the pussy way. I guess this just isn't that hard either. Let's go back and do uh, maybe the ice world level four to five. Yeah, actually over leveling, power leveling. Or even then, think about how long it would take if you were trying to if you were trying to do every single dungeon like still in the forest, right? That is what I was trying to do, one to three. So shouldn't that like scale up or do something? Otherwise, there would be no purpose in, in doing any of that. But like, I already have a, wait. How did I end up here? I already have a mental track that like I did all the ones in the water unless it changes them dynamically. That'd be stupid. How could the area just change? Or maybe I spawned to a different location. Like I was up in the water up at the top there. Huh, now I'm confused. I'm so OCD that I would try to do that, but actually I shouldn't bother because it's going to be impossible to keep track of them anyway. They'll just be like an infinite number. So let's go back to... I guess we should just skip ahead to the <coughs> highest area. Master difficulty. Makes it seem like level 10 is going to be the max level or something if you're already getting legendaries and already be call being called the master. So let's do... Let's maybe only do the big dungeons then, since we're looking for a challenge. Could be famous last words, but everything so far has been such a joke. And I'm going as far as it's even letting me go. Desert Frontier. Yeah, we need to change that perception too. Like, oh, something is easy because it's for kids or whatever. But then meanwhile, you look at a game like chess. Is this guy going to blow up and one-shot me? Totally ripped off the creeper appearance. Regent of the Rivers. Legendary hat. 348 maximum health. Uh, worn by rulers of an ancient desert kingdom. Blessed with two life-bearing rivers. Wait, didn't I just get a legend? Oh, that was like a face thing. Damn, dude. They're kind of spoiling you in this early game stage. They don't really feel so legendary if every single random level 8 enemy drops them, I suppose. There's a bit of a problem with this whole thing. Uh, let's go up to the top here. I guess I won't be so particular about trying to do every single one, but that would be sort of my base nature. I guess I could just handicap my own gear if I was trying to... I wonder if this is actually part of it, but I guess you can't go through there anyway. Or maybe like this. Gonna die to fall damage one of these times. I can't tell whether I'm actually in the dungeon or not, actually. Of course, it's so big that this probably must be part of it. Now, you can tear through that stuff with your, your build thing. I don't know why I keep thinking one of these is gonna be friendly at some point. I'm not even using all my abilities here, or I don't know when or if you're gonna get that many more, because you only have so much space to put them. And in fact... Even beyond that, you don't even have uh, seemingly the ability to change them at will. First skulls, okay. Come on, give me, give me a real challenge, dude. Oh, wait, I can't even do the right click. Why not? Maybe this weapon somehow just doesn't work with it? Not like I even really need it. He's bouncing up and down even more crazily than me. Wailing Warblade. Legendary melee, rank 25, level 8, 155. Keens frightfully when swung in battle, as if bemoaning its bloody fate. But the bloody fate is of everything it's hitting, not itself. Place to cue yourself in a private delve, which starts at depth 35. 
Uh, I like the private part of that at least. 155, 3% movement speed, 9% critical. Why was my right click not working? I guess it must require a certain type of weapon. I was using like a staff there for a second, but it was still better than anything I had before. Slay the mad steam rager. But what if when I get to him, he's not mad anymore? Then I guess I'll just let him go. Yeah, even this combat is more immersive and engaging than the Diablo genre, just because it, it's sort of more... I, I always hate the perspective, right? Like, zoom out like this and you have a Diablo game, or zoom out even more than that. Is this really him? Is, is that it? That was one of them, at least. Face tank everything. Vintage visualizer. Requires level 10. Relic face. 531 maximum health. Presents perfect analog. Arrangement of the past panoramas. Not in your collection. I didn't even read that one. It is. It can be upgraded with a variety of pugilistic techniques. Unarmed only run. I don't think I've touched the lobby yet, so I don't know how much damage it does. It might actually one-shot you. These might help to guide me. Doesn't this look like such a Minecraft type of area too? I mean, never mind the voxel, obviously, style, but even just... You know, caves with lava in them and whatnot. And even those guys totally looked like creepers, although they, they were just cactus enemies. Didn't they make a... Oh, shit. Didn't they make a Minecraft-inspired... Oh. Yeah, what if it did? I'm sure it won't kill me, but it almost should work like that. We need some one-shot mechanics to make this, sh mix this shit up. They made, like, some kind of Minecraft dungeon. So maybe that was even inspired by this game, because that... I think this has been out longer than that. Or maybe it's the opposite. Top Hat Tomcat. The feral feline seems to tolerate your presence beneath this abode for now, even though I haven't put it on yet. This is plus 11 magic find. Yeah, this must be the boss. Let, let's see what he's capable of. At least have a lot of health or something. That's decent, I guess. You have your heal, which is kind of cheese. It's still too, too face roll for now. Imagine needing to do this in a group. Like, what the fuck is this, dude? Even if you say I'm over-leveled, I did go to the higher level area. Although I am actually taking some amount of damage here. I can't seem to do my abilities there. Okay, I got a little bit reckless, but at least he did a meaningful amount of damage. Ori Crystal Hammer. Legendary Melee 155, forged by a mysterious golden glass that focuses light onto itself. This is not in your collection. Okay, will kill me after the combat. When you let your guard down. I always love that when a boss, like, it'll fall down. And the act of it falling down after it's dead will do damage to you. And that'll be the finishing blow. Or it'll do, like, some kind of suicide attack that you wouldn't expect. Is he actually, like, loot uh, stealing from me or what? And those people didn't even help me. And I didn't even want them to. But then they come in right after. I guess you can't help it. That That is one of the most annoying things about a PvP or a player... MMO sort of experience not only just like oh potentially getting ganked or or griefed by somebody which at least that can be funny and you know they control you or whatever but Inferno and gold gold try your time of moment, but they could also help you when you don't want them to Like you're about to die in your hardcore 1 to 60 playthrough, but then they they save you or it's at least close enough not to, to call where they could potentially buff you or heal you or something one of the things, I guess, that makes me grateful to be a small streamer. That guy at least did a meaningful amount of damage. I don't know why it was that sometimes I couldn't do my ability. Oh, I, I must be running out of my resource, which normally doesn't come into play because it's over before you even know it. I don't even know how I would get out of here. I guess I could just teleport back to the hub area. Yeah, this is actually pretty great. Only thing I would... How come I can jump so much there? It's like I'm underwater, but I'm not. Or maybe I ha I've gotten some new ability that lets me quadruple jump. What the fuck? I wasn't able to do that before. Is that a bug? Must be some maybe something to do with one of my pieces of gear. Huh. Yeah, how do I even get out of here? I want to actually test that. Can I not break this with my... Yeah, that's kind of interesting how they... It's the one area where you can actually break or maybe build stuff. 
within a dungeon because most of this other stuff you can't do anything about. Oh, look though, the damage values are actually getting meaningful. But then I can spam all seven potions in one fight, so it's no big deal. Or maybe just for the sake of this particular dungeon, it lets you do that. E to teleport to the start of this dungeon. The start. Okay, so we just go outside like this. Or... Now, will it will it stop letting me do that once I'm... No, you can just do that anywhere. What the fuck? So it went from a double jump to like a pentimple pen jump, or however you fucking say it. Or maybe I could do that all along and I just didn't know it. Okay, now at least it's getting a little bit interesting, though. That looks like a scorpion or something. We did the one big dungeon there. And again, you can't even really make it that much more difficult unless you just handicap yourself because it's not letting you go to a higher level area anyway. We get to level 10 at least, I feel like. Maybe I should try to do one more of these, although... Oh yeah, here we go. Let's do this big one. I didn't really do as much crafting as I could, and I kind of wasted my full bag of inventory. Maybe because I felt bad for doing it, because... You know, maybe overleveling or something, but... In a general sense... They sort of, uh... You, you should have broke down your stuff there. Only thing that feels weird is like, what if I make my home here? Will everything just teleport with it? It will, so that makes it kind of a little bit too forgiving. You don't have to actually commit to any one area. It'll, your house literally just follows you around. So the other big one was taken down there, so let's go all the way over here. Seems like there are more players here. There's only 600 people playing this game, period. Or maybe that's just on Steam, so it won't show if everything's cross-server. He did always give me the half health there, that guy, so give him credit. I'd be interested to see the PvP element of this too, but just for the first experience, I don't like to overdo it. At least get to level 9 here. Your house makes things convenient for crafting and collecting. Trove is a great game. Yeah, when did it come out? I, I heard about it like a while ago, and then I never got around to trying it. In fact, the fact that I'm playing could be an omen that is about to be de delisted, because that's always my my luck whenever I play these games on this format. It's like when they're about to go offline. Six years ago, wow. Is this the one? It must be. All right, here we go. Play the malfunctioning minor boss. Slay the mad steam rager. Almost gives you like a Diablo combat style vibe just because of how many enemies there are sometimes. I actually ran out of my energy for like the first time ever because that one went, uh, that fight actually went on a reasonable amount of time, unlike most of these in the beginning. Okay, this should be the start of the dungeon. Game looks better with higher FOV. Oh, yeah? How do you do that? Let's see. Video. Brightness, gamma, ultra. Custom. Field of view, 75. Let's make it like 90 as usually standard. Here. Yeah, I like how in Dead by Daylight, that's actually one of the core mechanics of the game. Like, certain heroes, certain uh, killers have higher FOV, and that's like a function of their character. <laughs> If you found a way to do that organically, that'd be like cheating. I don't really feel like why people would feel the need to group either because I'm sure at higher levels, but it's so laughably easy now. I'm even trying to make it more difficult or like if I die, I have to delete my character as I usually do in these kind of things. That's what makes it fun, actually, to play a single, uh, like, a MMO solo is because there's at least a risk involved. Like, just try to get from one to max level without dying. Oh, this is a pretty cool arena. Your mount is your main source of movement in the early game. Yeah, I'm surprised they give it to you so early, actually. Oh, what the fuck? 
Whoa, whoa, whoa. What the fuck? I'm talking shit about how easy it is. Relax, dude. Okay, we'll use a potion. Get out of there. The last guy wasn't doing that much. Holy fuck. Okay, we gotta wait for our abilities. You talk shit and you get fucking rolled. He almost just two shot me. I have to do something that's gonna hit him from a distance, or I have to go in with like a. like an ability, maybe. Watch now, the permadeath master engaged. All we have to do is get out of there, though. Like, it's not like his health is gonna come back. I haven't been using my shift thing as much as I probably should. But he's falling asleep all the way on the other side of the room. Yeah, kill this guy. He's got his two bodyguards. These probably won't hit nearly as much. I keep trying to, like, strafe away to move. Night class is better if not using abilities. Okay, he's not going to catch up. But yeah, he does, like, literally half my health per hit. Is kind of how it should be. Yeah, now, now we're talking. Fuck. Though I guess he didn't do as much there. I literally got to, like, 20 HP or something. Oh, fuck. Somewhere in there, he just does, like, over half my health. He'll turn it from a permadeath to a hitless run. That's what I've been looking for now. <laughs> Level nine and a half. Two gives damage. Yeah, that does heal you and give damage resist. Why do these people suddenly appear at the end when I when I kill it? They're not helping me do it in the first place, but then they always just spawn as if seemingly to ninja my loot, which I don't even know if you can do that. I haven't really felt the need to use my mount much. In fact, I forgot how to even do it. Let me see the how to play. Use, pick up, open your character sheet, open your inventory, Z. G is to mount, dismount, ship. Yeah, I thought getting a mount at level 20 in the modern WoW or something was early, but this is ridiculous. Go in the store. There's a free mount. I feel like this one's fine. For now. What is it? New... Mount, oh, here. Are you sure you want to buy the Bounding Bunt Cake? <laughs> okay. Purchase successfully completed. Free starter class. What does that even mean? Collectibles are used... Like, one of the five that I wasn't... I don't even know what that did. One of the five that you weren't able to start with. Yeah, let me actually try another class just to see how it'll, how it'll play. Since, of course, I'm far too good to die here, even though I almost just did. Totally not like I'm pussying out because I'm worried that it's actually getting difficult. But that's a good point to at least end off on. This almost looks like Frostmourne, this weapon. Let me look at it closer. Oh, shit. Let's see. Oh, it just closes it all together. Tomb Raider is good for early game, uses magic damage, spawns minions, yeah. Those are always like very easy mode classes whenever you have a pet or something. Yeah, I'll be back. Is that normal for- I guess not everybody would stream it, but is it normal for it to not be able to game capture? Or even like it did, but then it doesn't show up on my OBS. <laughs> 